Good evening. It's Wednesday, February 27th, 2019, and you're listening to the Hidden Path Podcast. I'm your host, Resonance Rich. This show is brought to you by GodlikeProductions.com, our home and community forum, which has recently been under attack like many other online social communities that aren't mainstream, which support freedom of speech and ideas. They're attacked where it hurts the most. And with GLP, it's been cancellation of service from payment processors, which are used by members to support the site by purchasing monthly premium memberships. So tonight, we here at the Hidden Path Podcast will be giving away a $100 Visa gift card. All you have to do is head on over to our Twitter, at Hidden Path PC, follow us, retweet our message about free speech and GLP being under attack. We have a link to the tweet below in our description. One user will be randomly selected on the 1st of March to win the Visa gift card. This giveaway will only be available to U.S. citizens as of now just for shipping purposes, but um, go ahead and retweet that message, and good luck. Tonight, our guest, Steven Sorensen, who follows the work of Anatoly Fomenko into the interesting theory of new chronology, which suggests that history may not be at all exactly what we were told, and more importantly, when it is said to have happened. His website and more information can be found at chronologytruth.wordpress.com and is also linked below in the description. So tonight, I'd like to welcome to the Hidden Path Podcast, Stephen, thank you so much for joining me tonight. How are you, my friend? Hey, Rich. Thanks for having me on. I'm doing well. How are you? Great, man. Great. So tonight, to start this off, my first question is going to be for you. Um, You know, what started you into this research? What led you initially down this path? Well, uh, I'd always been interested in um, history after maybe around like 13 or 14 when I started taking it a bit more seriously. Yeah. Um, so I started looking into it. I looked into comparative religion for a little while because I thought it was interesting that so many different scholars had drawn such similar connections between these different deities. And um, I thought it was I thought comparative religion, that's very interesting. Maybe there is something to all these things being somewhat similar, sharing these similar features. Right. Uh, So I kept looking into it. Um, I had taken some time to look into just studying uh, fallacies and cognitive biases and stuff like that. So I actually started a project called ThinkWell, which can be found on my website. It's... uh, somewhat of a project to promote thinking well and um, critical thinking. And uh, yeah, so that's sort of the foundation of it. I was compiling a chronology of American education for a little while. And um, it's pretty interesting, but I had to put that on pause because I ran into the works of Anatoly Fomenko. So what was happening is I was trying to sort of figure out exactly well where do all the schools come from because you know america has only been around for 300 some years almost and uh we're base we base our education off of uh other education that predates that so i started looking into it and um a lot of the history started sort of falling apart a bit uh when i looked into feminine stuff it sort of started clicking a little the stuff i had looked into earlier about uh comparative religion where on the traditional timeline that i think the general public would accept uh a lot of these things like religions and cultures predate the cultures that supposedly are christian around the zero to 300 mark where that starts but in the new chronology all of these cultures and religions are predated by Christian culture. And instead of it being a hodgepodge of all these other random unrelated cultures, it's uh, all these other cultures are directly out of this uh, massive ancient Christian culture. That's fascinating. And uh, why don't you take a little time to explain for myself and the audience who Anatoly Fomenko is 
and his research? Um, he's a Russian mathematician who devised a empirical statistical method of dating uh, narrative material, which is the textual material that we have to be able to construct a historical timeline, uh, like uh, different records of seasons or uh, star catalogs or um, stories like the Gospels uh, of the Bible. <clears throat> he created a way to analyze all these texts to be able to test them for dependencies and independencies. And what was discovered is that the dependencies are much more than just coincidence, that all these different texts and origin stories share these same features. It's more likely that they all share a common textual origin or a common event that gave way to the writings that supposedly record it, you know? Right, right. And a lot of so, these are documents that historians hold very dearly that he would say, well, they dated them wrong, right? Like Tacitus or Cicero yeah. or uh, a lot of, yeah, a lot of the ancient guys. But um, so, yeah, so I'm he's a mathematician who devised this new method of dating. Um, this isn't the only method that he's devised. There's a few of them. Another one is their astronomical methods. They have created a program which accurately tracks the... There's a lot of programs out there that do this, but they have their own for the sake of convenience. Um, and it tracks the planets through the sky, so you can see where they were. A lot of the time, they track them around between like 500 BC to 2080 to be able to figure out where these planets were. And it's important to know where the planets were because in ancient times and even up until recent times and maybe still today, uh, people have recorded important events with star charts. Like uh, right. any uh, one that's looked into astrology and knows about their natal chart or their birth chart, it shows the position of the planets in the sky during that time. And so in the new chronology, one of the methods for obtaining dates for different artifacts is dating these different zodiacs that can be found on ancient artifacts, like in the tombs of oh. Egyptian pharaohs or on a piece of like, cloth right. in the church, uh, different charts and books. Yeah. And I imagine, I imagine with the uh, advancement of technology, you know, we've, we've come a long way with... Um these these um programs that show where the stars and the planets were in the sky you know dating back mm -hmm. they can go backwards has, has that helped a lot well yeah so the way that the astronomical dating complements the textual analysis is that the astronomical datings mostly more than uh, more than not they line up with the textual analysis what that would suggest and on the traditional timeline the only datings that would be applicable are wildly off from the date that it's given right. um so they both complement each other they're independent dating methods from each other they don't rely on each other to be uh used to date stuff yeah now did did Fomenko initially when he started his research he was he was studying um western media right yeah so i think originally they were working on uh analyzing media material to right, find like, a common a the common source for it news from america was that mostly <laughs> it news outlets yeah. and such yeah i think it was american and um what they were doing was like basically if Time article releases an article like Times News or whatever, uh, a bunch of smaller organizations will see that article. They'll produce their own version of it and they reference it and they'll still get a lot of viewers, but it's based off of that one. However, if they don't include a reference, there is to a degree a way to be able to tell if those two articles are dependent on each other. Um, through being able to analyze them for uh, using the same words and the same frequency and 
uh, the same words and the same placement throughout the articles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so I think what Fomenka and his team have done is they've extended that type of uh, method of analyzation onto ancient and medieval texts to be able to uh, analyze them to see which ones are dependent and independent from each other based on different things like textual frequency and the numbers of names and numbers and stuff like that. Right. And, um, you know, his big thing was that history, the history of mankind was skillfully falsified, like it says in his description here. Um, do you think that it, it it's a big cover up? Do you think it's I mean, from what you've seen, you had to have seen some things that obviously don't line up. But what's your take on it? Do you think it's intentionally done? Do you think it is uh, an intentional falsification of history? Um, I think originally, right off the bat, that there was hostile feelings after uh, this. In the new chronology, there is a massive war that takes place around 1380. And after that is pretty much when everybody starts to kind of try and figure out what's been going on. Right. And start to kind of start piecing stuff together. And just shortly after that is when we start sort of regaining our global connection um, after we've already sort of gone across the world. So I think that shortly after that, there were people that probably were um, falsifying histories, maybe creating things to make them more official. Right. I feel like a couple times I've seen stuff where like, a guy is trying to open up a school or something or he's like looking for these documents and eventually he finds them and opens up a school. And uh, then from there on out, you know, that character of history is official. Uh, I'm referring to Plato right now because Plato is largely unknown. Supposedly this is according to the traditional chronology that Plato is largely unknown until Pletho or Plethon reintroduces him so okay this dude this dude with a really similar name rediscovers and reintroduces him to the western world and he's considered like i think the founder of neoplatoism which okay. is like the new plato but according to the new chronology it's more than likely that the plato character was created around that time and the documents that plato was based off of actually were related to some important character from within the last couple hundred years, not from thousand or 2000 years ago. What, what are some of the more, the things that you found or the things that you've seen with Fomenko's work that um, really stand out to you and off, just off the top of your head? Well, so I was looking into it and uh, before this was a couple years ago, when I was looking into it, I wanted to just get familiar with some of the claims. So I went in and read through their How It Was in Reality book. And it's basically just a chronological timeline that covers all the important events of history mm -hmm. that have happened since our since the dawn of civilization around the year 1000. Uh, I was reading through it and I'm thinking, this stuff is just out of here. Like. <laughs> It's pretty wild. You it know? is. I don't know how he's going to try and substantiate these claims. And so I figured, uh, you know, if I'm going to try and see if this is right or wrong, I should go in and check out these methods books, these volumes one and two. Right. And it's like 644 pages between the two of them to read them cover to cover. Uh, wow. I, I checked those out and then I was like, oh, man, like, I'm going to have to really like learn some math. I'm going to have to go check out these documents because these, the original methods are based off of, they claim 15 basic chronological tables and 228 fundamental primary sources, wow. which basically cover all of ancient and medieval history. And that is what they apply their empirical statistical dating methods to. To arrive at their conclusions and they figure that most everything can not be traced before the year a thousand and that it's more logical that it all happened more recently than being spread out over the course of six seven eight thousand years traditionally 
with people nowadays even saying that it might be 10, 20,000, 100, 200,000 years, maybe even a quarter million uh, wow. of civilization. But this is saying that it all might have happened very quickly and recently. Yeah, so that brings a lot of events that we thought happened, you know, a long time ago. It brings them forward really close to us, right? Right. And so this is partly explained by the chronologers and the historians in the 1300s, 1400s, pushing these events back, introducing plays and comedy and fiction, and uh, kind of dissociating from this very tragic uh brutal event that had just recently taken place i think is how it's kind of explained yeah yeah and um didn't he uh, also theorize that there might have been you know thousands of years of just placed in between like uh in between us and certain events or even events that were just completely false um yeah so it's there's a i think he has three basic distributions for the uh, events where when they were put on the chronological timeline, they were segmented in such a way that they're concentrated in three separate areas uh, based off of the main event. And I think it's something like 300 and 1,000 and 1,300 years or something, but I don't have mm -hmm. the notes right in front of me. Um, so... A lot of the events say they happened in the year 1200 on the actual on the new chronology timeline yeah. when they were uh, when they were examined in the 1400s 1500s uh, they were put a lot further back like towards around like the year so for example uh, on the new chronology uh, the Christ character is born around 1153 AD Wow. So his event is moved back around a thousand, eleven hundred years into the past. Yeah, and it's also moved, I think, about a thousand kilometers to the west. Right. Uh, Fomenko thought that uh, Jesus, the Christ, he was uh, actually crucified on Joshua's hill. Right. Um, I think so. It's the Mount Bacos. I think is what it's called. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's in Ukraine. Um, but he's born in Crimea, is I think what the new chronology maintains. Okay, yeah. And that's based off of quite a bit of info, so it's a bit to get through. I'm still, a lot of the bigger claims are taking me a while to sort of formulate articles for because I have to go and first confirm all this information to be legit and I mean, so far when I go and look into it, it does check out, but I might hit a roadblock here or there. Well, I got to say, yeah, and I got to say about your website, you have a lot of articles on there, man. You've done a lot of work. Um, I'm sort of just compiling the statistical data for now. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of trying to put it into perspective. Uh, his stuff is somewhat concise and gives the need to know information. And he does have a ton of info. Like, it'll take. It's taken me years to get through it, and I'm probably maybe like a fourth or a half of the way through all the wow. books that have been published. And I mean, I do, I read a lot of other stuff too, because I'm trying to, I've read tons of other fundamental sources now, and I've learned a lot more about history just trying to make sense of this new chronology than I have on any other kind of uh, study. Well, you're learning a lot, and I'm learning as well. I mean, I did not really know about any of this, um, but it is fascinating. And, you know, we were talking earlier uh, before we started the show about Wikipedia. And, you know, I noticed on Wikipedia they call it pseudoscientific, anti-scientific. Um, there's a lot of people that get upset about this kind of idea. Um, have you found any information or have you contacted anyone about you know, anyone that says this is just total BS, any organizations? Um, um, I have reached out to, I mean, I have asked a lot of people. For the most part, the general public doesn't know much about it. And most academics that I try to reach out to through like email or Facebook either just ignore me or <laughs> they say 
they haven't looked into it or they have and they know enough that he's like a mathematician or something and he's got some ideas on history you know i don't know like they don't really know much about him so right. i'm trying to find these people that are the supposed experts and the bunkers of Fomenko, but they have yet to contact me and i am making it known that i am looking to contact them um well good i, I would to save my time on all of this but if nobody else has done this on the english language and has it nice and concise up like my website or you know even better than my website who knows uh what resources are out there but i've been looking and there's not a whole lot of english there's a lot of french people interested in this and uh there's a lot of stuff in russian but I I only speak English and <laughs> I use the Google Translate to be able to read the other stuff. So yeah, does that work pretty well? Google Translate for for large documents like that. It suffices. Yeah. Um, you can kind of tell where it's messed up. It's like obviously it doesn't mean this or it doesn't mean that, but right. Now, uh, Fomenko he also had um, thoughts on radiocarbon dating. Can we get into that a little bit? What's, what's, yeah. What was his take on it, and what's your take on what he theorized? Well, it's he mainly references the C-14 crash. It's by these, I think, in Dutch or something. But it's an interesting read. I used the Google Translate for that one as well. Mm -hmm. um, they sort of cover just the basic issues of radiocarbon dating. Uh, they do a decent job, like, I don't know, some people in denial might be able to say, well, you know, this is just a fluke, like one in a million, but I don't know, like it's <laughs> radiocarbon dating, it's not very reliable. Some people might say that it can accurately date thousands of years into the past, but I think from what has been demonstrated, it might be able to date things within the last thousand years. Right, okay. Accurately. Yeah. But and... there's a lot of other methods. Yeah, has there been a lot of historical, at least chron chronological, uh, facts placed upon what radiocarbon dating has found at all? In some yeah, situations, a lot. a lot of them, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'd have to get the data on how many objects have been radiocarbon dated versus not. But yeah. uh, <laughs> there, are, there are important objects that have been radiocarbon dated, and that dating itself is held as a respectable opinion. Right. So yeah. it does skew the, the view a bit. And I guess really one of the main issues with radiocarbon dating is like, we just don't know. We don't know what happens in the atmosphere. This week, I think they just declared that the atmosphere actually stretches beyond the moon. So I've seen we that. Don't... That's crazy. We don't really know what's up with the atmosphere. We got less than 2% of the ocean floor covered. Uh, yeah. Examined. We can only drill like eight some kilometers into the Earth's crust. Like, I doubt that we can account for every single thing that would affect an object and its radiocarbon decay. Um, right. So, yeah. I mean, like, some of the examples are just like dating objects off by like 10, 100 times what yeah. they're actually from so if yeah. you had something from earlier that afternoon dated to a thousand years ago it's like okay well i don't know how scientific that is but they call the new chronology pseudo science <laughs> yeah yeah and they they do that with a lot of things you know to discredit it that it's just too far out it's it's sketchy or they'll put these labels on it um, I know you had said that you're starting a wikipedia account to go in and try to change what what are some of the things you've noticed that have you noticed anything that are just blatant lies about <laughs> this kind of research or or just people yeah, with not me, all the facts let me pull it up real quick i can pull up the wikipedia account it just the way that it's said it's just a very it's like a hit piece you know it doesn't represent it in a light that is accurate um right. it's it itself is somewhat of a disinformation piece um <laughs> like I was I was telling you earlier before we went live that when you used to Google Anatoly Fomenko's name, he'd pop up with a big red circle around his face saying disinformation agent, disinformation <laughs> agent. <laughs> and uh, 
yeah. we got that's gotten taken down now but um this article is interesting too because it talks about this uh historical revisionism for the new chronology so if you go to the new chronology by Fenyenka, there's uh two new chronology things out right now and it's from Yenka and roll roll uh he's also got a different one it's not as uh, short. It's, it's a little bit shorter, but not as short as Fenimka's. I've contacted Roll on a number of occasions, and mm-hmm. he has never responded. And I think maybe once he did respond in the comment section, so that he hadn't looked at it. But I don't know. Right. I'm still waiting to hear back from him to get something. Yeah, from and, and, <laughs> and Fomenka himself, he's still alive to this day, right? He's still around. Is is that yeah, good? I think he's in the seventies. Yeah, right. Is he still doing research, publications, or anything? Do you know? Yeah, they, I think they published two books last year. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, what? What? Where would um? We know our we know our calendars. Our calendar has been changed um, at least a couple times, right? <laughs> where Where does that play in as far as the calendar being switched around or changed? Um. um all right. Well, Does that play into this I at all? Yeah, let me just put a pin in that real quick just to make a statement on because we were going to talk about the disinformation on Wikipedia. Uh, sure. I'll just make a quick statement about that. No, let's go into that, that yeah. Calendar. Um, so it, it says that it's a pseudo historical theory which argues that the conventional chronology of Middle Eastern and European history is fundamentally flawed and that the events attributed to the civilizations of the Roman Empire ancient Greece, and ancient Egypt actually occurred during the Middle Ages, more than a thousand years later. Right. Which which could very easily be changed to say that the new chronology is simply a theory or a historical theory, which argues that the conventional chronology is fundamentally flawed, because it's not just Middle Eastern and European history, it's all history that seems to be flawed for right. their chronology. And so it argues that these events, which hap- the it argues that the most important events that we have historical documentation of happened within the last thousand years. And from that, through faulty history work, it's been a tr- these ancient <laughs> these ancient Greece and ancient Egypt and the Roman Empire, they were created during the Middle Ages. Wow. Because wow. prior to that, nobody thought they existed. Nobody had that concept. It wasn't until people were told that they were this old and such uh, construction was in such location. It was on paper. And then the people went out with their papers to try and reestablish where these things might have happened. And so then the Wikipedia just kind of says it kind of weird. But we can go on to the calendar stuff, too. No, that's fine. I don't yeah, know. I mean, we see that a lot, I think. Um, How long of a show do you usually do? Oh, we, we could talk for as long as you want, man. Um, usually we'll go an hour or so, so um, cool. wherever you want to go with it. I just, I seen your um, graph on here on your website. It says the true origin of religions may be re- represented more accurately by the chart found in my primary resource. And um, it's kind of showing... Um, dates of the 12th century 13th century that just brought my mind to the calendar Um, right so i have that but i also have a whole entire article on the calendar did you check that out at all i'm trying to see here let's see where am i at here um i think let me go to my website as well if you go to the timeline section it may be under there as 12 months of, or just 12 months. Oh, yeah, months. okay. I think I've seen that. Yeah, so the calendar has been changed. Is that? No, it's not there. Maybe it's on my homepage. Let's I see. need to put it there, though. Or It's kind yeah. of a miscellaneous. Yeah, I found it here, the 12 months. There it is, okay. 12 months. Yeah. My third useful reference paper. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. 
So yeah, this was my article kind of establishing uh, the names of the months because I thought it was interesting. With the, I started looking into this around the new year um, because I wanted to figure out like why do we have why is January and then January, February and then February, right, and right, yeah, so on. And I had always, I'd always kind of known, like I learned when I was younger, that it's like Greek and Roman gods, you know, right, like uh, Janus and uh, the February festival, mm-hmm. stuff like that. But now that I've got this new chronology outlook on it, it does look a little bit shakier compared to what may have actually been based off of this statistical empirical method of dating. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and what was what were some of the uh, inconsistencies you found with that? So one of just one of the things is that like the Greeks and the Romans they had a huge pantheon of gods, like tons of gods, right. and yeah. they've got January and June both considered to be maybe after Juno. I mean, January is typically considered after Janus or Janus, but. Mm-hmm they also sometimes have attributed it to Juno. So I'm thinking, well, with all these gods, you guys are going to overlap two of the months. <laughs> God, like, okay, whatever. And also that they couldn't figure out, like, some festivals to hold in the later months that are numbered from September to October, November, December, which is like 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. They couldn't, they wouldn't just add gods to those months just for the sake of it they just gave up after six months or something (laughs) i don't know so or eight months but so those are just some thoughts that i had after looking back over it and then once i sort of looked at it from this point of view of the new chronology uh i thought well yeah this sort of makes a lot more sense than this random hodgepodge of uh roman and greek gods that kind of really aren't even the most important gods of the times they're sort of yeah um so do you want to talk about what the new chronology thinks for the calendar yeah let's go into that that might be interesting definitely cool so the months of the year are there's two major calendars that we have that have created this and it's the julian and the gregorian right and um the julian is supposedly has had been created for a long time prior to the gregorian but i think that they're more likely uh created around the same time uh in the 1400s 1500s um and it's actually interesting because this character joseph scaliger he's considered the modern or the father of modern chronology, and he's act- he's the one that kind of put together the basic timeline that we use today. Oh. And he was supported by Patavius. This Joseph Scaliger character is also famous for his Julian uh, mathematical equation for uh, the calendar. So, not until Scaliger was it that this important Julian cycle thing was discovered. Uh, Okay. on this calendar that had been used for so long uh <laughs> and so the julian and the gregorian calendar seem to appear around the same time and they're in competition with each other for a while too like the julian calendar was used in greece until 1923 russia until 188 or 1918 oh, wow. most of most of europe was on the julian calendar in 19 19- until the 1900s yeah. Egypt and Japan in the late 1800s so what were the major differences with those anyways because I have no idea between you know I may, have, I may have just misspoken but those are the years that they adopted the Gregorian calendar okay so right right yeah they may have been using a different type rather than the Julian my apologies on that it's okay um the differences are about a day yeah <laughs> So that's why it was confusing to people because if you were using the Julian calendar in one country and you had to send something to another country, you're shipping maybe a day off uh, by the date. And if 
you didn't know which one it was, then you'd be like, well, this is here a day early mm -hmm. or well, this is marked a day behind. Yeah. <laughs> so now we mostly just use Gregorian calendar. Yes. All right. Yeah. And, you know, along with this and other things, I'm sure there's a lot of instances where history, the dating, the chronology, um, you know, it was it was messed up maybe in a way on an accident, but there's probably some indication that this was done intentionally in some fashion. So yeah, you did, you were trying to cover that earlier and yeah. I can expand on that to help some of the listeners understand a bit more. When the, an example of somebody doing this intentionally is uh, not that the Catholic church or any organization would burn thousands and thousands of manuscripts because they didn't feel threatened by them or they thought that they were, uh, you know, just nonsense and right. people would know that Heretical. they burned thousands of manuscripts and art and destroyed monuments. We've only got like, I think like maybe 10 tops of the Mayan codices, but I think it's like four actually is what it is because they were all destroyed by the Catholics. <laughs> um, so that's an example. It does seem though, that the more extreme destruction of history happens just after the war in uh, the late 1300s. And as time goes on towards the late 1600s, 1700s, the radical feelings of historical revisionism die and uh, people are a little bit more accepting and lenient on which documents are allowed to be kept around. Right. And we've lost a lot of important things throughout history through destruction, fires, whether they're intentional or not, or whether we think they are, right? Uh, we've lost so much, it seems like. I have currently a list of like 20 to 30 some burnings, it looks like, uh, between the 1400s and 1800s. Shakespeare's King Lear was banned until 1820. People went around to read Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. The, Catholic Church condemning Galileo in the 1600s. Uh, the first edition of the expurgated Talmud appears at Basel in the late 1500s and uh, is not allowed to be read. There's Martin Luther's translation of the Bible being burnt by order of the Pope. Uh, a lot of different bannings and burnings here yeah uh, so you know a lot of these uh whether it's been destroyed or, or altered intentionally what do you think what do you think the intention lies behind this what do you think what do you think their purpose of doing this is for those who are anyways um if you had to take a guess there are some theories and it may be uh one of the um how to put this <clears throat> so you're familiar with the concept of the 12 tribes of israel yes uh, yep. the 12 houses right. uh these are supposedly uh different families and units of the ancient great empire oh, okay. and one of these families used to be the uh bankers and law keepers uh -oh. that kept the records and whatnot and they became somewhat some of them became somewhat greedy and uh so when the collapse of the empire took place people were coming back to claim what was theirs uh descendants of the ancient kings coming back by claiming blood right over uh items that belonged to them and kicking out this family <laughs> that was the banking class kind of and in charge of the records and whatnot wow. and uh it seems that this is uh mainly honored under one of the brothers one of the twins that is honored in gemini uh okay. it's it's uh they laid low at the vatican for a while and that's pretty much where our history starts is with the Vatican. Yeah, and the Vatican, uh, they got their own little um, secret vault, too. <laughs> so it's 
I, I'm pretty sure it's in the new chronology that it's the family that wants to regain control of the world finances, uh, doing it how they can today. Mm -hmm. And they believe that there is a royal bloodline um, delivered down through the Christ lineage. Right. So, or whatever they believe now, but I think that's what it originally was for distorting some of this stuff or at least distorting it in a way that nobody else would be able to know um because they had lost so much maybe they wanted to ruin it for everybody else as well so i see yeah and i think we could only speculate right yes we only can Uh, i mean in search of the truth we gotta look and uh just imagine i mean george orwell like he said those who control the present control the past and those who control the past control the future. And I think uh, Fomenko opened his book series with that quote, or he had it in there at least. I believe so. It is one of the opening quotes. Yeah. Right. So if you want to talk about the calendars, we can move this back again. Yeah, sure. Uh, to- yeah. Sorry um, if I'm taking you all over the place here. I'm just <laughs> trying to No, it. no worries. I like to try and stay focused, but... I also like to cover as many topics as possible. So definitely, like let's go there. For here, um, the month of the year basically is that January and February. Yep, they used to be at the end of the year and got moved to the beginning of the year. Uh, mm. You can read about that in the article. Okay. So they didn't always used to be at the beginning, but they have always been together. And they haven't always been in the order of January, February. Sometimes they used to be February and January. So these two months are, they can be considered uh, like uh, a unit. They're a couple. Um, okay. In the new chronology, these two months are probably representative of Jesus Christ and John the Baptist. Wow. And it's not representative of janus and the february feast although it could be argued that it is because both of those are somewhat reflective of john the baptist and jesus christ wow that's interesting huh (coughs) what 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 points towards that um so there is some interesting uh things that point to it and again some of these things they may sound a bit odd at first but in the greater scope of the rest of the months, it seems to fit in just beautifully. Uh, John the Baptist is named so because he baptized people. Right. Um, yeah. He's depicted in the river, bearing the water for others to become pure and to get baptized. And so there's a potential chance that the water bearer of the zodiacs is representative of john the baptist um being the water bearer and it's in the zodiacal chart <laughs> the as such um there's also some other very interesting correlations between john the baptist and the other zodiacs that are within range of january um but we'll try and get through this because it is kind of a list of these eight people uh sure so- John the Baptist, uh, you guys can go and anyone listening that's interested in this, maybe like, hmm, this is interesting. And like, no way, like, it's not possible. Like, <laughs> you can come in onto my website and read my article. And uh, I have a lot of information up on where you can contact me at chronologytruth at gmail.com. Uh, send me information on it. But John the Baptist may just be the true root of January and Jesus Christ being such a purifying uh person uh he's the lamb that came to save us from sin supposedly right uh he casts he's recorded as casting out demons in the new testament and uh has all these different stories surrounding him sort of just like this february feast where it's about the mother wolf and the two sons romulus and remus uh where i think romulus is christ and remus is john where the wolf is mother mary is the mother the wolf 
Uh, I think that it may even be logical to assume that January and February are named such and are the only two named such with the airy uh, ending on them because it's like Christ of Mary and John oh, of Mary. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and so this is just a quick run through. I mean, there's so much information to that goes into this. Uh, March is Mary and Joseph. I think the new chronology traditionally attributes March just to Mary. But when I was looking into it, there's a lot to signify that it may also be representing Joseph. Yeah. And uh, so what you have here is these first three months sort of represent the initial royal family of uh, the Christ character, his brother and his parents. And so the first three months of the year are spent honoring uh, the royal family, which gave way to everybody else. Okay. So that's kind of how it's explained. Yeah. Traditionally, traditionally, it's just a hodgepodge of events that were attributed to their gods <laughs> oh, that yeah. we know about the documents yeah. covered in the 1300s. <laughs> yeah, and in all this, it can be very confusing, I mean, for a lot of people, too, myself included. Um, so, yeah, I mean, basically, it's split up where the first three months are for the initial row of family. The next two months, April and May, are traditionally, I think, for uh, April is like Aphrodite. So, uh, you know, like everybody is getting busy and having children and reproducing. It's the springtime. Uh, things are coming to life from the winter, mm -hmm. uh, the summer. Spring. And so they attribute it to Aphrodite and have a celebration like that. Um, it may actually be related to the biblical Abraham. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a, it's actually got a very interesting root where Abraham and April uh, will share an AVR root for their word. Right. Um, and it's because Abraham is considered the father of Israel. Everything that came came from his line pretty much where God promises a, they make a covenant together uh, where he's going to populate the lands more numerous than the stars, I think is how it's put. Mm -hmm. And so may yeah, I'm getting a lot of feedback on your phone here. Um, is, are you, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know if it's on my end or yours. <laughs> I'm still, but oh, it okay. could just be poor connection. Yeah. Sorry. Anyways. Yeah. So, yeah. so April and May are together. Uh, as Abraham and Sarah, or uh, I think May I, Mayus is what May is traditionally attributed to, but it, with this new chronology, it probably makes more sense that the first three months are the royal family, and then the next two months following that are descendants from them that give way to the rest of the population of the world, uh, the flooding of population. Okay. Um, the following two months from Abraham and Sarah are the twins, June and July, which are uh, represented in stories like uh, George the Victorious and uh, legends like Prester John. Or one of the main figures is uh, Genghis Khan and Batu Khan. Oh, yeah. They're considered to be the twins. I think traditional chronology says that Genghis Khan is Batu Khan's grandfather. Um, new chronology says they're brothers. That's interesting. And, and, and then the final August is, I think, attributed to the, uh, I'm just going to go look it up because I already yeah, say his name. Normally, I say it wrong. Normally well, considered Roman, for Julia, Julius Augustus or no, that's. Yeah, it's Roman Emperor Augustus. Um, Augustus, I'm sorry, Julius Caesar Augustus. Got that mixed up. <laughs> yeah, there's one. I think it's April, actually, is Aurelius. Is sometimes, if it's not Aphrodite, they attribute it to Aurelius. Right. And, uh, hmm. So, yeah, or Aurelian. But it's an interesting article. I suggest people go check it out and let me know. Uh, yeah, it looks up. like there's a lot of information. I'm just... 
putting it on the stream too, scrolling through here. Um, yeah, the last one is Dmitry Donskoy, and he's supposedly the father of all the medieval kings, and uh, it's pretty much the last of the known royal family before everything got solidified into a calendar and history got messed up and distorted and uh, everything got changed. Yeah. So there we have a very clear lineage and honoring of this great empire that gave way to structures like the pyramids and go Blackley Tepe mm -hmm. and the Great Wall of China and stuff like that. And uh, otherwise, if you believe traditional chronology, it's just old pagan stuff, old Greek and Roman uh, practices. Yeah. And, you know, just looking at this calendar stuff, um, there's something else that just came to mind about the new chronology is that a lot of um, historical figures of the past, um, they were duplicated in a way, right? Yeah, like they have them. Uh, Anatoly Semenka and his team have a website at chronologia.org, and they have in there how it was in reality book, a list of over 100 characters that are based off of these Christ character. Wow. What, what, and, are, what are some of the more popular ones that were based? Like in Krishna and the biblical Christ living like 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem and Nazareth and stuff. That's based off of an actual Christ character from the 1100s. Um, some other popular ones are like old Roman emperors. And um, here I can hold up, but there's uh, Buddha is another one of them. Really? Um, Buddha? Wow. Yeah, so it's interesting because I was looking into that one too. And uh, when I was looking into Odin, apparently comparative religious scholars had compared Odin to Buddha for a while. Wow. Um, when they started looking into the Eastern origins, they thought there was a case to argue for connections between Odin and Buddha. And uh, the new chronology says that Odin, Buddha, Jesus, and Krishna all share a similar origin. Well, not a similar origin, but the same origin. That's fascinating. Because a lot of people like to identify them as similar anyways. Yeah, some people do. Other people like to say that it's absolutely useless to try and draw connections because it's they weren't in connection with each other at that time. So hmm. they couldn't be connected. Yeah. Now, um, this war you talk about, this great war that happened, um, you said around 1000 AD? Is yeah. that... There's a great... <clears throat> the uh, dawn of civilization should be considered around a thousand. Okay. The war is in thirteen eighty. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What What's that all about? So I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced, but my best attempt at it is the Battle of Kulikovo, and uh, this battle is recorded throughout ancient quote unquote history. Uh, oh. 30 different times from what they could discover. Um, it was a massive battle, kind of the downfall and beginning of the split of the empires and whatnot and religions. Uh, it's reflected as stuff like the Second Latin War, the Gallic War, uh, Emperor Constantine with Licinius, um, supposedly around like 300 AD. Uh, this battle close to the 1400 was reflected as David and Absalom um, from the Old Testament. Uh, it's in ancient Greece is the Battle of Marathon, uh, the famous Sicilian battle. Um, it's in ancient or the history of Persia or Iran as yeah. a king fighting with demonic hordes. Uh, so it's reflected quite a bit. It was a massive war across, I think, the whole entire world. Uh, Dang. And it was pretty much the underdog rising up. This is kind of when gunpowder was invented and cannons were starting to be used. Mm -hmm. uh, there was two main branches of this ancient Christianity, supposedly according to the new chronology. 
uh, one of them was the royal Christians and the other were the apostolic Christians. So the royal Christians were limited to uh, people that were related to Christ, people that believed that Christ maybe was a God. And so they themselves were gods because they were related to him. Um, and that's where a lot of the pagan stuff comes from today. Um all of, like the pantheon of Greek and Roman gods we're talking about. Yeah. Those are the royal Christians that were deified into gods. Um, the apostolic Christians were sort of the followers of Christ. You didn't have to be a member of his uh, family. So when this battle took place, it was the apostolic underdogs versus the royal family with the whole might of the horde behind them this massive empire that they had established. Uh, so they pretty much were expecting that the underdogs would just get crushed. It's reflected as um, David and Goliath in the Bible. Uh, yeah. That story itself may not be represented as accurately as it could be, where David has a staff and a sling with some rocks in it. It may be that that staff is a musket or a rifle and his oh, sling of gunpowder with bullets, and that because they had this upper hand, this secret weapon, the royal Christians had no clue what to do. <laughs> and so they were getting hit by, like, mortars and, yeah. like, guns and stuff and uh, taken out. And so that's supposedly what the new chronology beliefs happened. Wow. Um, from what I've looked into so far to try and kind of confirm or disprove any of it, it it all looks to check out, but I'm not an expert in history yet. So I'm hoping to find somebody that has already done all this so that I can just sort of be like, all right, well, cool. You've already figured this all out. Yeah. But I don't see that yet. So, yeah, I think uh, a, a lot of people out there like yourself that are searching, um, they would love to find the same thing. Um, you know, your journey into this if this is all true, what does it mean for us? You know, what does it mean for you? Is it, I mean, it's pretty deep stuff, right? Yeah. I think it's very interesting. It gives a perspective on the past that may change your perspective on the present. But, um, as far as like, I'm on a lot of social media, primarily just Facebook and, uh, Google, but I see a lot of articles being posted with, uh, catch lines like or headlines like a uh, 5,000 year old sword found in Denmark or something you know yeah. what they mean to say is somebody found a sword and called it 5,000 years old right. uh, based off of what they're dealing with and so yeah, it just sort of provides a different opinion on stuff uh, I feel like a lot of people today I mean I've the articles and stuff so who knows how accurate that is but supposedly people are becoming less religious and taking up more non-religious supposedly non-religious if you want i have some hang-ups on the definitions but they're becoming less traditionally religious and uh, i think it's because of the perception of history and how that's affecting them yeah that um, would be a a big point too is right there um and, you know, going to going back uh, just a little bit here to the Bible, like you said, David and Goliath, you know, a lot of people consider the Bible to be very allegorical, more so than accurate. Yeah, um, so people... this puts it in a, it's a literal uh, reading where the words have been edited and changed, but you can still understand what they're talking about with uh, the bigger picture of world history. Yeah. And do you think the Bible contains some hints as far as some of the the stories being allegories for historic moments, like you said, David and Goliath? Are there any others you think? Um, would you be able to word that differently? Well, I just mean like you said, David and Goliath. The story of David and Goliath was really about a big war that happened. Do you think any yeah. other stories in the Bible might hint towards those being events also in history? Yeah, there's quite a few different yeah. stories. Like most of the, all the stories in the Bible that have been placed around the years like 4000 BC to 
480 all happened within the last thousand years. So wow, yeah, we we're trying to figure out what happened in the past based off of this stuff. They're trying to our calendar today is based off of how many years has it been since the birth of Christ? Right, 2019. That's how many. Yeah. Repeat it. <laughs> Repeat it and keep it. <laughs> but what we're really looking at is around 867 years since Christ. Wow. That brings it forward quite a bit. Oh, yeah, quite a bit. So, so yeah, how it affects me is um, sort of just putting it into perspective of, I guess, the magnificence of humans how quickly we've been able to come up out of the mud and out of the caves and be able to create such magnificent things. Yeah. Where supposedly we were just fumbling around for millions of years and then <laughs> it took us a couple thousand years to do it. Now on this new timeline, we were just stumbling around and it took us a couple hundred years to figure it out. Now, does any of this play in with uh, the founding of America at all? Or does that? Um, well, Minko only does ancient to medieval history. Okay. And so the cutoff line is pretty much 1750, just before America. Okay. <clears throat> However, it does add a very unique perspective onto the conception of America and what may have been going on at the time. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, yeah, I'm just looking through your list here on this article, uh, founders, father and founders list. That one is interesting because it helps map out when some of these different studies were established. Yeah, I'm looking through it right now. Um, okay. Yeah, what are some of the more interesting ones you found from this, um, looking into this? On the fathers and founders list? Yes. Um, well, one of the funny ones is that the earliest one is the father of history doubles as the father of lies. <laughs> um, and that, these, all the characters that I have included on here before the year 1500 are questionable. Okay. So definitely the ones before the year thousand, probably like most, more than likely didn't exist then they existed after the year 1000. So wow. As far as establishing who they were and where they were, um, I think it's still up for grabs, um, trying to piece it together. And it would be cool to be able to get more information from the Vatican and other uh, that would be cool. Other organizations that are withholding information from being observed for whichever reasons they have. But we can work with what we got. Yeah. There's more than enough to for a lifetime that's for sure <laughs> um yeah. some of the more interesting ones is that the father of modern philosophy i think is uh descartes descartes i'm not sure exactly how to say it i've heard it butchered so many times um modern philosophy and modern epistemology is rene descartes or however that's pronounced yeah i'm sure there's some expert listening that is correcting me right now on his head so <laughs> um, that can be corrected later um that one was interesting microbiology is around 1600s um rene was around 1600s as well uh father of modern chronology is scaliger in the 1500s father of modern anatomy is vesalius in the 1500s father of modern astronomy is Copernicus in the 1500s, <laughs> right. modern right. physics and science in the 1500s, so, father of English literature, just prior to that. <laughs> geez, yeah. Uh, we had and, a, we had a question. I don't want to get too off base here, but we had a question from our producer, Renaissance Ted, and he wanted to ask: um, Can you explain how the lunar eclipse tables are not aligning that led to Fomenko's hypothesis? That's um, I can kind of, but it's not really my strong suit. I've been sort of trying to get more familiar with the information, uh, with the astronomy about it. But mm -hmm. it's—I think he's talking about the uh, 
Newton paper that talks about the moon's elongation. And I think what Newton conjectured was that it sped up or something, or okay. the moon had to have uh, been very quick uh, at some point to be able to match the records that were shown. Right. And I think that's what I think Newton was talking about uh, with his diagram of chronology, but I could be wrong because I'm still sort of, like I was saying earlier, um, I'm digging through a lot of the primary sources so that I can substantiate the claims without having to use the claims themselves because I don't want to have to reference Kamyanka's book to prove his book, you know. I want to be as informed as I can on this, sort of like I wouldn't want to use the Bible. You know, the Bible's right because the Bible says so. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> Kamyanka's right because Kamyanka says so. <laughs> um, but yeah, so sorry I can't give a whole lot of info on that, but I think it is because uh, Newton thinks the moon had to speed up or slow down or do something weird that could only be accounted for by some like mysterious force or something. And uh, that caused things to be messed up. But Yeah. Um, it's, you can read about it in the first volume of his methods book. And it looks like you'd learn all about it within the first 31 pages, maybe 35. So um, that's where you would want to look for any listeners uh, to learn about it real quick because I don't want to butcher it and then get you thinking something that isn't. So you can just get it from the horse's mouth on the first 35 pages of the first volume of his empirical statistical analysis of narrative material and its applications to historical dating. Yeah. How much How much of his material have you gone through? I, I see he's got a a volume here of history, fiction, or science. Have you gone through that at all? That looks fascinating. Yeah, I've gone through that. There's only the first five volumes are in English, so I've had to use uh, Translate for the other ones. Oh, okay. Uh, those are basically the uh, initial discoveries from the methods. Mm. Um, I have a bibliography on my website. I think he has some 80 unique titles. I maybe, like I said earlier in the podcast, I think I've read maybe a fourth to half of it by now um, out of all the material that he has. But I haven't actually, once I compiled the bibliography, because uh, I wanted to know, I wanted to get like a percentage, you know. So I'm going to go through and sort of figure out which books I've read, tally it all up, and then I'll have a precise percentage on how much of it I've actually read through. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, when we had talked earlier about doing this podcast, you know, you had mentioned to me about, you know, some of your early schooling where you've learned the trivium method and using logic. This has come to play and help with you a lot. Um, has that been a big um, factor in your research? Definitely, huh? Um, to what degree it's influenced me, I don't know. But, yeah, we did have a trivium education system in the school that I was attending when I was growing up. And uh, I think that it's definitely helped me in being able to clearly uh, comprehend some of these ideas and not get hung up on improper thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, an example being maybe I think that an idea is ridiculous and uh, because I'm just going to keep appealing to ridicule uh, <laughs> that idea is wrong because I ridiculed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. So, yeah, I think uh, more importantly even than the historical thing is the study of fallacies and biases and um, being able to identify those and being able to hold yourself accountable and to not indulge them and in turn being able to create a network of people that can hold each other accountable for it. Um, because a lot of the time I hold my tongue with my friends. Sometimes I don't, but, uh, or with strangers even. I, yeah. It's it's not easy to try and tell someone, well, you know, that's a fallacy. Like, you know, you're not thinking well right now, like by <laughs> saying that. Uh, you know that you, you're showing a bias right now. Um, I think it's easier to maybe help people learn about it prior to them committing a fallacy or indulging a bias than trying to teach them about it right there on the spot. So 
that's what I was talking about earlier with Thinkwell. I think that's pretty much the underlining basis from Yenka. Uh, his my studies and his work is somewhat of an exercise in thinking well and being able to uh, <laughs> critically and now yeah. critically analyze his works um, to be able to provide such a concise and clear rendering of it. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about that project, your project Think Well. Um, what's, so, your, what's your hopes and goals with that, and how do you so yeah, plan to go about doing this? I mean, I'll, just, I'll do what I can here and there to promote it, but uh, once a month I was going to post an article to cover something, and initially I had compiled a list of 300, 400 some fallacies, and I was, wow. I'm on a month, so that'll last for maybe five, 15 years uh, of content, of thinking well, of uh, going through them and focusing on one a month to kind of practice it and yeah. uh, get familiar with it. Um, I just promote it where I can just because I think it's important. The One of the reasons why I did it is because, uh, like I was saying earlier, with the education, I had learned logic classes when I was younger, so I kind of knew it a little bit. But then in my teenage years, I did some things, as most of us do in our teenage years, that I, looking back on it, you know, maybe it's not the smartest thing to have done. <laughs> We've uh, all done that. Right. So I was thinking, well, how can I help people from doing that? How can I help people right. from uh, doing things that they could easily avoid doing had they just been provided with the tools to be able to distinguish that? negative thing from something which they think would be useful in the future that's great um, man. So that's, that's what think well is about is trying to promote uh critical thinking and uh living well and thinking well and we need that more and more every day don't we steven uh we do it seems like we're losing that <laughs> yeah definitely uh it seems that there is some sort of organization or a few that self-identify that have purposely been trying to get kids wired on knee reactions and not on critical thinking mm. um there's all sorts of actually <laughs> really weird studies on like television shows and hypnotic suggestion and whatnot oh but, yeah big time you know big we time. could do a whole nother show on the modern means of deception the show is supposed to be about the ancient means of deception <laughs> or <are> medieval. <laughs> right. And so you would think that part of this um, changing of history, altering of history, or uh, the revision of history that's, you know, accepted by the world, that part of that might be deceptive in its, in its intentions? Um, well, just like the whole chronology of it is the traditional i kind of missed what your question was there well i just mean the the fact that you know you we're finding out with Fomenko and with yourself that some of the history we think happened at a certain time didn't and that there's events that weren't necessarily yeah. there i mean do you think this was all <laughs> some of it was at least deceptive in a way yeah, yeah. definitely yeah like i said like, I think we've covered that on the show a couple of times is that um, there was some intentional deception and there was some unintentional deception. Right, right. And from there, it has just been a interesting show of what people can think and prove. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you sound like you're sort of into conspiracies a little bit there, Stephen. Is that true? Because we are too. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> both called conspiracy theory, but... I like to consider myself more of a coincidence theory. Okay. I'm more coincidence theorist, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of coincidences in the world. Oh yeah. These things are all just coincidences, everybody. You know, no need to worry about it. Right. <laughs> Definitely no one's conspiring. It's just the coincidence that they're plotting against you together. <laughs> <laughs> um Absolutely. no, but I did want to just mention, um, some people have uh commented on me laughing quite a bit and being humorous, and I do think that keeping a humorous outlook is something that can help you through life. Um, Absolutely. If you strict and too down, uh, I feel like that just doesn't do much for your benefit. Yeah, you so, get too serious sometimes, and it's just too serious, right? 
Gotta have a. So I, I don't laugh because I think this is all a joke or that it's not serious. I think that uh, it is a very serious matter, the accuracy of our history and um, being able to compile it in a way that makes sense and is representative of what has actually happened. So all jokes aside, I do take this seriously. You're and, just a uh, lighthearted fellow, that's all. I am lighthearted, so <laughs> uh, that's why I laugh a bit. It's not just because I'm... I think it's a joke. <laughs> I just wanted to clear that up. That's okay. Yeah. Episodes. Well, let me ask you, uh, where's your research leading you now? What are you into at this moment getting into? And what do you hope to, um, what's your hopes for the future? Well, right now I just would like to get all this information. So it's been very difficult getting all this information compiled together. It takes tons of hours in yeah. the free time that I do have. Right. And uh, so I'm, I figure at this point that for the average, I work part time and sometimes not at all recently. I've been at temp agencies, but uh, for somebody working full time, plus with a family, plus trying to do school or better themselves on like on their own time, they don't have time to be looking into all this in the way that I do. And in the time that I do have, it's very difficult to figure it out anyways. So for the average person looking into history, they don't have a resource on the internet that can quickly give them the information that I'm collecting on my website. Um, so I think it's a very important fundamental resource. I think it's also a good statement about the state of academia how much money in America you have to pay to get a degree to oh, be considered yeah. a voice on something. Right. I can easily become a voice, an authoritative voice on a subject based off of the internet. I can learn just about anything that you can learn in a school and teach it to you for free. Uh, and that's what the website's about is providing free education. Man, so that's great. the short term goal is to provide a wealth of free information to the public. Um, the long-term goal uh, over the course of my lifetime, I've always wanted to create a farm and a uh, garden, uh, a massive uh, vertical farm. Um, I put money into researching ways to be able to create more efficient technology to be able to help people get fresh food um, in cities and stuff like that. Yeah. The end game is to be able to make enough money to be able to fund research into technologies like that. And uh, another goal at the end of the game would be to have a massive garden uh, with exotic plants and uh, maybe even species that are threatened and species that haven't been ex like haven't been uh, discovered yet. Um, something that could be put on a world list for. Uh, uniqueness for the garden and uh, money from that could go towards the research of trying to improve the world. So, but those are long-term goals and I'm just trying to work with what I got currently, which is <laughs> well, basically nothing, you know? So well, you're, you're doing a great job, man. <laughs> I mean, I love the website. I love all the information um, and people can go to this website and help you out. Right. Is this under the patrons tab? Yeah, um, on my homepage, I have my Patreon uh, link, and I think there might be one under the Patreon or the Patreon uh, page. But the Patreon thing on my website is my public list of people that are helping me. Uh, Patreon is a platform for like artists and creative types or yeah. people with those. Uh, just for listeners that don't know what it is, you know, um, people can go in and listen. Uh, my girlfriend and I, we listen to this Crime Junkies podcast. They like oh, cover nice. cold. It's sweet. And they've got a Patreon. And uh, they've got all sorts of cool content on there. But I've also got my Patreon now. So if you're interested in this, if you're uh, someone that I was just talking about that's working full time, you got a family and stuff, and you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, you can help support my show and my project on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month um, to help pay for your cost of like looking into this. You know, I'd, I'd like to do this full time, which means I'd have to make around a thousand dollars a month or so yeah. uh, to do it. But 
I feel like that's easily doable because there's people with a lot. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to <laughs> judge anyone's content, but, you know, a lot, uh, I think, less important content. They're making a lot more money off oh, of it. Oh, heck yeah. So, totally. Um, totally. But I also have another option on there for 20 bucks a month. So if you are really on the go, but you really like what I've been talking about and you kind of enjoy the direction that I'm headed, you can do 20 bucks a month for my uh, package. I've got all sorts of benefits in it. You can choose one article for me to write about each month. So if you wanted to learn, if uh, Ted wanted to learn about Newton's elongation theory for the moon or something over that month, I would research it, compile basically as much info on it as I could in the time that I had to provide a comprehensive sort of detail about what you would find on the internet just by searching for it, you know, and uh, enough info to get informed and feel like you can comprehend and sort of talk about it yourself. So not only would that be useful for you as the person that doesn't have enough time, but has money to give to a person that does have time or is trying to have time to do it. Uh, it helps everybody else out in the long run too, because now there's a article that covers this and all everyone else can reference it as well. Um, yeah. And that's a valuable resource. And then on top of that, I've also been uh, looking into merchandise and stuff. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Like bridge magnets that I could create uh, to help support and fund the show. But I don't really have that large of a following yet. So that's not really something I'm producing quite yet, but that that is something that's in the plans if my show ever picks up and my research project starts getting some funding. Yeah, definitely. And you have a YouTube channel too. We can send people over there to check you out and subscribe also. What's your yeah. YouTube? Is it Chronology Truth also? It's just Chronology Truth. My YouTube is not very expanded. There's not very much content on it. And the main issue is my laptop and my phone. They're both very old, nearly broken, and cannot handle creating videos and stuff like that. So um, I am running. I had a GoFundMe, but I think it's broken. So I'm just requesting people go to my PayPal if they want to help me get a new computer. I'm trying to save up some money as well. So I'm oh, trying great. to get it like sometime this year. And then I can, because like right now, to be able to research stuff my computer is just so slow it takes forever to put <laughs> pages man they then, all seem to get that way don't they God. yeah i mean it's like a mid-2011 macbook air wow and way it's back. been through a lot yeah. so it's on its last little whim here but it's whatever i'm still working with it it's just really slow so i figure that somebody might be listening to this that is feeling generous and can throw like money my way to save up and get a better computer. I've been looking at them even like in between like 400 to a thousand dollars. I can get a very nice uh, computer that can handle making videos and producing professional content compared to what I'm compared to what I'm doing now, which is very low quality, low budget content. Well, We'll see what we can do, man, and see who we can send your way. Um, And, you know, we'll make a donation ourselves for you, man, because it seems like what you're doing here is some pretty good work. Um, And I hope I hope you continue it. Um, And if you make any other progress, we'd love to talk to you again. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about with the work um, before we before we go tonight? Um, Yeah, I think just uh, people tonight that have been listening to this, they may go to Google and check out Anatoly Semenka and new chronology or they may go to youtube and type in uh new chronology or something like that yeah. and uh chances are it won't be long before they run into information claiming that from is a government agent or nation <laughs> agent or that he's just mentally insane a russian wack- hacker uh, russian <laughs> hacker right so um i would just like to say that I have not seen any substantial evidence for that uh, claim that he's a government agent. Um, There was someone recently that had claimed he was an agent and then uh, had a public freak out uh, when I thought it. Um, It was was somewhat humorous, but I hope 
today that he is doing well and um, has maybe thought through his comment about that yeah. a little bit. More. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't get uh, discouraged by people that are saying he's an agent or oh, people yeah. saying that he's mentally unfit to be talking about this. Um, people will try to ridicule him by saying he just doesn't understand language. His grasp on language is very novice. And, um, I mean, it's, it's interesting because I tend to think that I had a pretty good grasp on language. But then when I started looking into the new chronology, I was thinking, huh, this guy actually has some interesting points on language. Right. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, you, brought, you brought him to my attention. I looked him up and I thought, man, this is interesting stuff. And a lot of times when I see those accusations, those type of baseless accusations, I think, <laughs> hey, there's something here, right? There so might... my my suggestion to people that look into this, if they find something that they don't agree with, what you're going to want to do is to make note of exactly what you found, okay? If you're reading through from Linka's book and you find something that is wrong, that you believe is wrong, make note of what book you're reading, what page it's on, what the quote says, and then – from there, work and create a counter argument for it because what I see a lot of people do is they say, well, he has no gr he has no clue about all of this stuff and he says this stuff and then I'm like, well, where does he say that? And they're like, well, I don't know. I saw it somewhere or heard it in the podcast. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of, you know, you need to have exactly what you're trying to counter argue. Um, yeah before you make a counter argument uh for it to be taken a bit more seriously you know definitely. people might take a baseless claim seriously so right was... definitely well hey steven man thank you so much for coming on the show tonight i really appreciate it steven's website chronologytruth.wordpress.com my friend i hope you continue the research i hope we can send some people your way and you can find uncover some, some more truth man yeah it's been a pleasure rich all right, man. Well, I'll let you go tonight. Have a good night, brother, and hope to speak with you soon, okay? Likewise. All right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. That was Steven Sorensen from chronologytruth.wordpress.com. Um, interesting stuff. So I did say that we're going to do open lines tonight. That's right. When you guys are going to call in, we're going to talk conspiracy? What do you want to talk about? You want to talk about recent events call me let's talk i'm gonna take a short break here but the phone line is open 818-659-0055 give me a call let's talk
Hey, everybody, we got a caller. Is this Sarah? This is Sarah. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. You said helicopters are flying over your house? Well, there's usually formations of three of them, and they fly over about two or three times a day. Um, just now when I got home, um, the humongous plane, I was vacuuming, and I was like, that's not my vacuum, and I turned the vacuum off. And ran outside, and it was a really low plane. And Whoa. I didn't see it anymore because it's kind of cloudy and dark, but I still heard it. What color was <laughs> it? Did, it? did it look military? I don't know. They're all military. You can kind of still hear the helicopters in the background now. Um, they, they posted on um, the Internet that it was training and that they're doing a training, so it'll be a couple weeks now. A training exercise. That doesn't sound good. Uh-oh. Uh, no, like for what? <laughs> <laughs> Whereabouts are you? Um, I'm in Arvada, Colorado. Okay, just outside of Denver? Yep. Yep, yep, on the suburbs, towards the west. Oh, man. That's scary. Does it does it scare you at all? Kind no. of, because what are they training for? <laughs> Why do they need helicopters? And even if they're transporting stuff, like I've seen some crazy stuff on the roads being transported but, like, what are they transporting or what are they training for that they need to do it for two weeks right now? Yeah. <laughs> do you think the military might be into some weird stuff? Some well, I stuff think they're they... always into some what we would call weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. Do you uh, do you have a conspiracy theory about it? What do you think? Um, I don't know. If I, I mean, I, I, I was prepared for martial law. Anybody who knocks on my door asking for my gun is going to get a bullet from it. <laughs> Ooh, dang. Yeah. Do you think, uh, well, you do you think, you mar do you think martial law will come one day? Do you think we're close? I, I do. I, I do. I do think it's, uh, they will, they have everybody under control already with these cell phones and, Ooh. and, you know, all that stuff. So, um, are you excited for 5G? I mean, I don't wanna... What's that? Are you excited for 5G? Have you heard about 5G? What's 5G? It's like the step up from 4G, right? You got 4G LTE signal. And they want to put in 5G. No. I don't know. I was watching the thing on the eighth dimension today, and I got kind of bored after a while, but it was pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just had mentioned cell phones, so I wasn't sure what you meant by that, if you were talking about the signal or just everybody staring at their cell phones. Yeah, everybody's staring. I mean, okay, they offered you the Internet, which is a, a huge um, bundle of information. You can learn anything off of YouTube to fix your car, to oh, build yeah. your house, to paint your house, to whatever. And what do they use it for? video games <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I mean, everybody's playing video games i mean not one kid out here can fix their damn car <laughs> yeah do you think do you think cell phones have helped humanity or kind of hindered it i think it really hindered it we're, we're using it wrong like i said you you give a man a fish and he'll eat but you teach him to fish and he'll live right so I think if you hand him a cell phone, not only will he be able to do anything, but he won't do a damn thing. <laughs> uh oh, sounds like somebody's in trouble. <laughs> so other than oh, the no, I... <laughs> other than the helicopters, anything else weird do you see out there? See any ghosts? Ghosts? Oh, I've I've downloaded my my share amount of ghost apps, and I do have them answer me as "Hello, Sarah." What? And uh, I'm like, hey, my name is Sarah. Who's here? And they're like, hi, Sarah. And and I have to slow it down. But um, it was a foggy night the other night, and I was trying to get my husband to go to the cemetery because I was like, that'll be so creepy. <laughs> but it was too cold. <laughs> so it's like a it's some kind of app that picks up noises or something? Is that how it works? Yeah, it's called the SG-1 and SG-2. Um, it's just radio frequencies, basically just blurting out letters. Like, what did you just <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense but the energies the entities can actually slow down um they can take control of the the waves of a radio because they're their energy right and so they 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 use it to to make words like the the app even says i only put letters out there there's no words there's no sentences wow. and so when you get a sentence it's the ghost making a sentence. <laughs> Dang. If that makes sense. Yeah. 
Uh, let me ask you, have you ever seen a ghost? Oh, yeah. Yeah, when I was a little kid, um, our house was haunted, and my mom said she saw them all the time, but she never told me about them. But I was taking a bath, and I was like six or seven years old, and I saw a guy standing there out of the corner of my eye, and I was like, uh, I looked over, and I was like, oh, oh well, it must have just been something. And then I saw this lady come flying at me with her hand out, and I grabbed my towel, and I ran downstairs, Mom! <laughs> and she said, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, get the fuck out of my house, <laughs> and our house turned freezing cold. And I remember it was right after my birthday, so it was in July. Wow. And, uh, and her house turned freezing cold. We were bundled up in hats and mittens, and my neighbor finally knocked on the door. And when we opened the door, she was like looking at us like we're crazy, and it was hot again. We were all sweating. Wow, so it turned cold, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was... <laughs> Dang. Do you, do you think that some of these energies, like these ghosts, might be demonic in a way or angelic? Or do you think they're just maybe spirits that are trapped, don't know where to go? Yeah, they're, uh, it, but from what I've heard, I watch a lot of Huff Paranormal um, on YouTube, but... From what I've heard is they, they want to fight the light. They just don't know either that they're dead yet or that they um oh, they yeah. don't know anything. They don't know where to go. Like, you know, you're 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 stuck because you want to tell your family, yo, your uncle killed me, right? <laughs> but yet <laughs> nobody will listen to you because they can't hear you. They're they're all around us. They watch you, but it's like yeah. not like perverts watching you take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so you use this app to actually hear them. Um, have they said oh, yeah, your I name? What else do they say? Um, you know, they'll say they'll say something like, you know, um, the city they died in, or wow. you know, um, they they, they want to convey their message is why they're stuck. Yeah. Have you seen anything? Uh, people acting weird down there in Denver at all? Anything weird going well, on? Are people on edge in more? The <laughs> right, everybody's chilled out, huh? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I mean, people acting weird as far as how. No, I don't really see many people. I just kind of stick around my own house. But I noticed people got rude. Um, a lot of people got mean. Yeah. Um, I don't think that people are as nice as they used to be. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah. Like that's just anywhere, I guess. But yeah, um, I think that's another thing also due to the cell phones. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, the cell phone's a great way to learn information, but it's also a great way to control people with information. Um, speaking of which, do you think we're headed towards an event in civilization? What, what's your feelings? Um, I, believe, I believe so. Um, I think it'll be like Mother Nature retaliates, right? So we're destroying the Earth, and obviously I noticed here in Colorado – it's not cold anymore. Like, the snow we get is fake. Okay, now this is going to sound really weird. When it snows, you can pick it up and, and hold it now, and it looks like, like you're holding a box of peanuts that were shredded, you know, packing peanuts. Right. And Whoa. it doesn't look like snow. It doesn't feel like snow. It doesn't feel like snow outside. Wow. <laughs> so it's like some kind of I artificial stuff? Yeah, like I lived here my whole life, and, and we don't get blizzards like we used to, and it stayed 90 degrees up until a month ago, and uh, and now we're getting something like snow, but it's not fake. It's snow. not the same. Yeah, it's it's not the same. It's definitely I would call it fake snow. It's it's man-made produced weather. Oh, <laughs> how do you think they're doing that? You think it's the chemtrails or? Um, I'm not sure. I, I've uh, the chemtrails have a lot of things in them that aren't good for us. I know that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> obviously, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how, how or what they're doing, but everything they've done is not good for the, for us. What we need to do is stand together, and what we do is fight each other um, in traffic. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to cut him off, and I hate him. And you get home, oh, this guy, he fucking didn't clean the dishes. I hate him. <laughs> you know, like, you hate everybody all of a sudden, and everybody hates everybody. And I don't mean to sound like a 60s freak with peace everywhere, but come on, you guys. Like, yeah. they're long. Well, yeah, it seems <laughs> like we're – Yeah, and it seems like we're divided in a lot of ways now with ideas or, or whatever. A lot of people are divided more than ever now. 
You feel that? Yeah, the case? for sure. Yeah. That that's what I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Um, what do you think about the political situation right now in America? Um, I'm not really into politics too much. No. But um. Well, that's a good. That could be I good think, in some cases because it's crazy right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, I, I, I don't know. There's a lot. I don't go into politics, religion, or money. So. Well, that could be <laughs> a good <topic>. thing. <laughs> that, that could be a good thing. So about the snow, you were saying, if you said it feels like packing peanuts, or what does it feel like? Just it's just no, it's different. Just like it's, you can make a snowman out of it, I suppose, if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, it's just a lot of things, like the the birds chirping and the, the way it feels when you go outside. You know, it's like a, a – you know when they said everything ended in 2012? Yes. Like, yeah. and you know, we're just kind of – ever since then, I mean, I don't know about everything else, but it hasn't felt right anyways. Like, I don't know what that – I've never really looked into that whole theory, so I don't really know, but – yeah, that's like um, a timeline shift or alternate reality or something like that. Maybe they're yeah, I, I, reality. I, I yeah, and the reality hasn't felt the same anymore. No. Like, reality is kind of gone. I don't know. They say the Internet brought all this technology and it brought all this stuff where, you know, we can now see the ghosts that you're talking about, you know, that we can now right. hear them and everything because of this technology. They were always there. It would just take us forever to get a picture of us smiling, so therefore, <laughs> right. let alone capture a ghost. And uh, as far as reality goes, like I know that ever since the um, earthquakes happened in Chile and where was the other one, Ecuador or something, yeah. that yeah, the I whole so. what is going on with that moon? It's supposed to be a, a, a Ecuador flip equator that shifts or something. Yeah, there's all kinds of theories out there about what's going on. I don't know. Yeah, what? I heard something recently. I don't remember where, but um, it was like the something is going to, the polar shift or whatever. It's going to. Oh, the pole shift? Again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't heard about that. Yeah, a lot of people talk about that maybe there's an upcoming pole shift that the, you know, the North and South Pole will shift and then, then there'll be tidal waves and, you know, continents will dismember and things will it'll be crazy but i don't know if that's the case that's just some people's theories what's your theory on what's coming do you think doom's on the horizon do you think something bad's coming or do you think it's just going to stay the same um i think we will destroy ourselves as a society like um like bugs and animals are on this planet to reproduce and keep their species alive right um we've done very well at that <laughs> <laughs> And now, now I don't think that, I mean, now I think it's really hard to um, control our population without going into something crazy like the military would, like a population control or a, you know, whatever, where they just wipe out millions of people because we have billions, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, what's, what's your um, hope? What's I'm your sure. hope for people? I just hope that we could all get along. <laughs> <laughs> just all get I wish along. that we would be nicer to each other. I wish that, you know, people would stop being so mean. Everybody is so mean to each other. That's and so and you don't understand that we have to be here for each other. And there are a million people out there that are so angry all the time. And, and they don't care about anybody but themselves. And and it's just sad. It you know, is. Like, it's a breakdown. It really is sad. Yeah. What do you think is causing it? Do you think it's just the way it is with the confusion? The chemtrails. The chemtrails? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put it all on the chemtrails. <laughs> it's just... um, I was watching a show the other day I wanted to talk to you about sure. um, or on YouTube, and it said that time travel could not physically be possible because space and time cannot cross and rewind or mm. something. I, I forget the link I was watching exactly. But I kind of believe that that's true. I don't believe that you can time travel. I do believe, now this is going to go against any political whatever, but I don't <laughs> talk about politics. But I do not believe in, uh, um, uh, I believe in coincidences. Like, oh, hey, look at that. That's a coincidence, right? Okay. Well, I know that coincidence, there are no coincidences. 
is the new thing, but I've had a lot of, it's like deja vu. Right. Deja vu happens, and you're, mm. I believe that's, you're where you're supposed to be. Okay, so because you think you, it's just, uh, just kind of a sign that, you know, hey, this is supposed to be happening, a sign to solidify reality, maybe? Or? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, like a deja vu is, is hey, you know, you're meant to be here, and that's why you remember this. Oh, okay, yeah. And when, when I used to have deja vu before, it was because everything's going great, everything's going, and, and the universe is like, hey, you're on the right track. Hey, that's a good way to put but it. Now, now with time travel, everybody's like, well, deja vu means that you've been here before, and it's because you travel through time. Well, that's I don't believe in time travel because of the scientific the, the scientists, they explain, and I hate to even <laughs> quote them because they're not right <laughs> in a lot of things, but <laughs> not everything has an answer. But uh, I believe that you can't cross space and time and rewind it because you'll mess up everything. Right. Yeah, you go back and you change but, something and then a bunch of things change, apparently, would be the yeah. theory, right? It's like if you went back and killed your grandfather – would you be born to go back to kill your grandfather? Probably not, right? <laughs> so then. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's some uh, what's some more extreme deja vu moments you've had? Have you had any recently? Are they increasing or? No, no. I mean, nothing really that stands out lately. I I don't know. It's a uh, more like you know. Did I already have this conversation? Like I'll be texting someone, oh. or you know, like. And I'll be like, didn't I already talk to you about this? And they're like, no. I'm like, well, I thought I did. But that could just be because weed is legal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, how has that been? And anyways, uh, how how long have you been um, in Denver? Were you there before weed became I've legal? Been there? There I've gone to the weed rallies and stuff and, and like ever since 1996, 98, 2000. I'm old. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> They've been going on for a while, but with weed being legal, it's just more of a hassle than anything, actually. Really? Um, because, oh, yeah, because they have so many laws to go by that um, it's kind of like you get pulled over and they can't tell if you're high. Right. You can pee hot for two weeks, right? Mm hmm yeah. So they, you know, what, are your eyes red? Well, you could have contacts. You could be tired, you know. So that's the big thing that they're dealing with right now is the cops are fighting how to prove that people are stoned when they're driving. Right, right. Well, just they can't. Right. <laughs> and on top of that, and just in a sense, with uh, what you, what do you feel? Do you feel that it's gotten worse or better since it's become legalized in Colorado? Um. You think it's made well, worse than better? Meaning, well, like it's still illegal federally, uh, to my understanding. Yes, yes, it is. But um, to my understanding, the federal government is back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch the news. <laughs> I do not watch the news. Well, that's a good thing. Um, Some of it's... If it wasn't for Terry, I wouldn't know anything. <laughs> yeah. But do you think the, but, um, the people think... have gotten crazier, or they've gotten more calmer? Things are calmer now because people can smoke weed or or does it seem like things have just gotten crazier or how's the overall perception I think it would be better i mean the more that you say somebody can do <clears throat> can do something mm -hmm. the more they don't want to do it <laughs> <laughs> so you're like here we legal and everybody's like yay let's all move here oh my god they may they may tell us or colorado like california we have like mid-mod houses in the middle of old town you know, that you see these little quaint, quiet homesteads, and now we have these three-story mid-mod houses. And it's disgusting, really. Wow. So the population's <laughs> got out of control, huh? A lot more people. Oh, yeah. We have more homeless people than we've ever had before. Um, they, they are all living out of their cars. Um, nobody can afford to live here because the, the $700 apartment I used to have is now $1,500 a month. <laughs> wow. And... and you know, do they pay more at jobs? No, no. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so um, it, it definitely brought everyone here, which is totally legal in your state, so go home. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but they don't. But we have a, a lot more homeless people now, and it's definitely noticeable. Like, yeah. I'd say that's the downfall is that, you know, everybody came out here 
expecting, you know, to get high and everything's going to be great. Well, you forgot about life. Right. (laughs) Paying bills and stuff like that. That's my other question. Do you think crime's gone up or down or how does that feel as far as crime in the city? I I have the next door app and that's like an app for your neighborhood. And a lot of people have posted lately, people breaking into their cars, cars being stolen, Mm. houses being broken into um, crime has definitely gone up. This is the suburbs. Like you used to be able to leave your bicycle outside and it wouldn't go anywhere. You know, like, you know, yeah. used to play in the street, in the streets and then just run inside for dinner and your bike would be fine. And now it gets stolen. And, uh, you know, wow. you have the, there's the homeless people. That's for sure too. They're, they're desperate. You know, they're, they want to eat or get high too. So they, you know, they're, <laughs> they, they want to take your bike now. So you can't leave it outside. And that's really sad. Um, I've noticed that crime has gone up a lot more in the little suburb area of mine, but, you know, you just have to be prepared. Like, yeah. I have the security cameras and I have, you know, the, the weapons and stuff, so please don't steal my stuff. I don't want to shoot you. Don't go <laughs> messing with Sarah now, people. She's well prepared. So that's interesting. It seems like crime has gotten worse since they've legalized Well, I weed. think that's also because of population, and that's yeah. due to marijuana, yes. Right. Yeah. That's we have a lot more people here and that don't, that can't get jobs that can't afford stuff. So they're going to go into survival mode and start stealing. And, and yeah. that sucks for people who worked hard for their stuff and lived here their whole lives. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we were going to have some guests on uh, that live down in that area. And what they do is they go out ghost hunting. Does that sound fascinating oh, no, to you? I'm going to go ghost hunting with you want to go ghost? Don't you just ghost hunt at your house, though? You said you just, they talk at the I, house. I go huh? to the cemetery and oh. stuff, too, but, yeah, I just. <laughs> does it seem I like. I just sit in my garage. But... Yeah, does it seem like the cemetery has more activity when you're using that app? Yeah, but it's harder to hear people cut or hear them because they um, they all try to talk at once. Really? Uh, they, they, they all want to talk to you. Um, whether they can see each other, yeah, I don't know, but they all want to tell you something. That's why they're stuck there. Yeah. Um, um, it's not just cemeteries; it's old houses, you know, stuff like that. That the house that I had that encounter with as a kid was just a house, you know, like it wasn't near a cemetery. Um, people get stuck in certain places because of certain reasons, you know, and right. Um, Do you think these spirits are evil, or 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 some of them good? Some of them are evil, just a balance. Most of them that are stuck are, are pretty pissed off. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you couldn't go anywhere and you couldn't like go where you're supposed to go, they they you know you'd be pretty angry too. Yeah, that's um, frustrating. Yeah, so um, if you have people ghost hunting, I'll I'll join them. I, I like to do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's become pretty popular. There's a lot of TV shows about it now, so uh, I see the. I see a lot of people are interested in it, but I never knew about the app. That's interesting. You can download an app on your phone and listen to the spirits. Yeah, um, a lot of them you can tell if they're hoax or not. Like when you download the camera and you'll be pointing it around your house and it'll go, (laughs) and then a ghost will appear on your screen. Uh, That's fake. Yeah. (laughs) Well, do they have any that you can use your camera? And have you have you seen anything on your security cameras or anything? Any kind of? Um, yeah, actually, I have some screenshots from my security cameras. Um, one day I was sitting there, I was talking to my friend, and, and I was like, dude, I'm going to send you these pictures to use, because I heard something outside the garage. So I, I just turned on a camera, and I was looking, and there was people out there. There's an alien. An there alien? An alien, type, an alien type figure in my car. Um, oh. I don't know if you can get pictures posted to your webpage or not, but. Um, there was, there's like people in the back seat. Um, I, I looked outside and I saw like a, a Pennywise type clown. I was like, dude, oh I'm going gosh. to bed. I was scared. I was seriously scared. And Carrie told me, she's like, you know, there is a war against good and evil and whatever. And, you know, and I was like, seriously, like, why are they all here? And I did take <laughs> screenshots and I asked, I asked my friends, I said, did you, do you see this? And they were like, yeah, I do. But, you know, you could have downloaded that app. At the time, I did not have any app on my phone um, that would have placed. I've seen what, what she's talking about because I, I downloaded the app that it will now put ghost faces in any shadow I see. 
and yeah. that's kind of annoying. <laughs> but I didn't have that app, so I uh, this is actual real pictures of the demons in my yard. Yes. <laughs> whoa, whoa! And you said one of them looked like an alien figure. Have you ever seen an alien other than with the app? Any kind of UFOs out there flying around? <laughs> um, when I lived in Colorado Springs, I put on night vision goggles one night, and I saw some crazy darting figures floating to the ground and darting faster than a parachuter was but colorado springs is the air force base and everybody says it was parachuters so i've kind of written that off as okay (laughs) yeah well then you got the choppers flying around there now yeah yeah these helicopters are scary me i just wanted to get that out there real quick because I mean, what are we trading for that they have to keep flying over our houses, you know? Wow. Yeah, anybody in the Denver area, there are helicopters flying around. They're doing a training exercise. Have you tried to look it up at all and see what's going on? Nothing? Yeah, I posted the link in the comments below. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, It's from the CBS News. So it's just like, oh, of course, they're flying the harmless. Everything's great. Don't mind them. (laughs) Because it's the news. <laughs> yeah, it's the news. You never know what the heck's going on. Yeah, we could pull this link up. Oh. But yeah, let me um, let me know when you have those ghost hunters come out. I'll totally meet up with them and yeah, go ghost hunting with them. Yeah, I'll I'll tell them you like that. Well, hey, thanks for calling in tonight, Sarah. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Good to talk to you. <laughs> you too. All right. Well, you have a good night. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> That was Sarah, one of our live callers. Uh, we're still taking open calls. We got open lines taking calls. So anybody else want to call in? I'm still here for a little while. 818-659-0055. Man, that was fascinating, Sarah, talking about the ghost app. That is cool. I'll have to try that out, see if I can hear any ghosts around here, huh? Anyways, anybody else going to call in? I see there's some people talking in the chat we got open lines call me 818-659-0055 let's let's talk what do you want to talk about something crazy helicopters flying around denver yep they are flying around you may be seeing and hearing army helicopters overhead they're doing flight operations near arvada yes she was right next few weeks Increased presence of helicopters. Wow. That is crazy. I wonder what they're doing. I wonder what they're preparing for, training for, huh? Just standard training? Or do they know something we don't? Yes. Interesting. Hmm. Anyways, uh, I got open lines for a little bit longer here. 818-659-0055. Anybody want to call in? We're going to take a little break. I'll leave the line open. Give me a call. Hey, everybody, we got a caller calling in. Is this Limerick? Uh, yeah, Randall is my handle. Hey, Randall, how you doing, brother? Oh, just sitting here on an evening in Seattle after work and uh, had some ham and uh, listening to your wonderful show. Well, so thanks, glad brother. you're back on, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Sorry about the long pause there. Been busy, been busy. How about yourself? What you been up to? Oh, just, you know, working my butt off and... 
stocking up on things and buying toys. I bought a crossbow and got myself a nicer set of night vision goggles like the girl was talking about. Ooh. They're a wonderful item. Yeah? They're a wonderful item. Let me ask you something about those night vision. Do they have different um, different categories of them? Like, are there some that are? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Different categories. All you really need is Generation 1, but they go all the way up to, like, 4 and 5, and, of course, the price goes right along with it. Uh, the, the more advanced the night vision goggle is when you get into the white phosphorus ones. Uh, those are quite expensive. They're in the three four thousand dollar range. Wow. Generation ones though, you can those for three four hundred bucks, and generation one is the old time green night vision goggle, which is really all you need. Just that and a good little IR illuminator, and and you can see all kinds of stuff at night. And she's very right about seeing ghosts with night vision. Yeah. You can also catch a lot of UFOs. You can look up in the sky with your night vision on a nice clear night, and you'll see all kinds of stuff going on up there. And you pull the night vision away, and you won't see any of it, believe it or not. I see stuff anytime I go out with my night vision, look up in the sky for longer than about 20 minutes, I'll see something. Really? Always. Wow. Oh, constantly. There's all kinds of stuff going on in the sky. And about the ghosts, <clears throat> we live... We live in dimensions. There's many different dimensions. It's like pages in a book. They're all right next to each other. We just can't enter into one, and they can't enter into ours. But we're all stacked right next to each other. There's all kinds of stuff right where you are right now, right next to you, right in the same space you're occupying. Oh, you're There's freaking other me things. out, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm telling you, they bleed into each other. These dimensions bleed into each other sometimes and some of the beings in the dimensions have the ability to move from dimension to dimension all the aliens you see and stuff they're not from other planets or anything they're from different pages in the dimension that's what cern is all about that's what cern is doing that's what they've been doing all this time they're opening portals yes. they're poking pinholes in the dimensions that's why they keep getting it making bigger CERNs and using more power because they're punching holes in the dimensions. As far as time travel, they've had that for years. Okay, it's how the ships time travel. They had it back in 1945 after Roswell when they re-engineered that craft. They figured out how to do it then. That's what the TR-3B, that's one of the, well, flying saucers. I'm wiggling my fingers right now, but that's what <laughs> the government's flying saucers use right now is a, is a, a form of a time warp. They actually expand time behind the ship and shrink it in front of the ship, and it's what moves the ship. You're in a little bubble of time. So there's virtually no inertia, there's no feeling, and your movement is instantaneous. And that's how those ships can suddenly go pop and just shoot out of existence and move so fast. And that's why the people are inside of them aren't crushed, because they're, they're, they're using time as their propellant. That's, that's what the ships theory. use. Yeah, and time is mixed oh, we, with space, too, right? Yes, of course. They've had this for years and years and years. See, it's not, this is nothing new. This is stuff that they figured out back in the Philadelphia experiment when Einstein and Tesla made that ship disappear, and the guys came back, and they were all melted into the Oh, into yeah. The yeah, what was that? And stuff. That's where they discovered You think they just put that away after that? You think they just said, oh, <laughs> well, that didn't work. Let's try something else. <laughs> Sorry. They, yeah. They've been working with that, and they've got it down to a science. They've got it perfected. Perfected. And, you know, you were on the cell phones. I'm going to touch on to that really yeah. quick. Yeah, she was mentioning phones, that, you know, and I thought she meant the cell phone signal. Horrific. Well, they're wonderful, and everybody in the world has one. And, unfortunately, it's brainwashing the hell out of you. It's a training device. It is, it is mind, it's rigifying your thought patterns. It's, it forces you, after you get so hooked on it that you can't get away from it, it forces you to use the Internet for everything. It steals your ability to think for yourself. That's why we're in such trouble right now, because most of the generations that are coming up, Z and Y and all these others, even the millennials, are all fucked up because they, they've had the Internet their whole life. The only people qualified that can even think for themselves anymore are the tail end of the baby boomers who had their whole life growing up and spent their whole life without all this technology. This fucking technology fucks you up far worse than you can imagine. And it's all based, Satan is behind all of this. It's all satanic-based uh, yeah. shit. Yeah. All, 
all of this is hooked together. And Roy, you're very smart not having a cell phone. You're very smart. I don't either. I'm 62 years old, and I've never had one. I don't have Facebook, and I don't have Twitter either because I know what they are. And I'm telling you, the cell phones are the downfall of man. I'm telling you right now, they're wonderful. You can talk to everybody. You can get FaceTime with your girlfriend. You can you can do all kinds of stuff with it. It's an amazing, amazing thing. However, <clears throat> those of you that do have a cell phone, go ahead and lose it for about 10 minutes and see what you turn into. You'll be a ball of nerves. You'll be, when you're, after a half hour, you'll be having an anxiety attack. Jesus, I can't find my phone. Where's my phone? You'll be losing your mind because it's a drug. It's a mind control device. And it's also the finest chip you could ever have, far better than anything they inject into you. You're carrying around the best tracking device known to man right next to your butt. All right? That's what a cell that. phone is. Oh, shit. Everything you do is monitored. Your, your AI does all its profiles on you and shit. They, they've got it down. so They're so far ahead of what you think they have right now. Believe me, what you think you know is light years behind what they have, okay? They know what you're going to eat, where you're going to go, who your friends are. They can tell what color your poop's going to be tomorrow, okay? They know <laughs> more about you than you know. Now, I'm not kidding about this. It's very bad. It's very scary. Well, a lot has come out and shown that that's exactly the case, that these are tracking devices in a way. Do you think these are going to be exactly used what... for what they call the mark of the beast? Uh, no. No? The mark of the beast will actually be the chip. That's for the cashless society, and they're going to take the money away, and they're going to make you get the mark of the beast. And that all falls into the Bible. Uh, it talks about in the ends of days when God starts coming down and opening his wrath, how man's going to have these this boils on their hands and shit. Man's going to get this very painful boil that won't heal. It talks about it in the Bible. Look yeah. it up. And that is from the chip when it blows up inside your hand where they're going to make you put it. And it's got a lithium battery in it. They try to get other types of batteries. They're going to get lithium. Lithium's highly, highly corrosive to skin and shit. And it'll make a big boil, you know, like golf ball size that won't heal Whoa. up. And that's it bursts, and the Lord's going to do that. He's going to make the chip burst. He'll do it with frequency or some shit, but that's after everybody has the uh, has the chip in their hands and shit. Well, and they're going to do that when they force the force you to have it because you won't be able to eat or anything else. You'll have to have that. You won't be, be able to use cash at all. They're, your kids are already zombies, Roy. They're already gone. <laughs> I, I'm telling you. No, I'm well, not kidding, no, man. No, I'm not, I'm not laughing at gone. that. Yeah. They can't. They can't think anymore. They've lost the ability for fucking cognizant thought. They have to be aided by the Internet and shit, and this is exactly what they want. They want you mind-controlled. They want you completely under the spell of all this technology and shit. Yeah. Just as sure as heroin or something, it's a drug, and it's being used on you. Well, uh, what do you I'm think would happen you. if we lost electricity and the grid went down or something? I think people wouldn't know down, what to do, huh? Eight, People are going to die. I guarantee you, they're not going to know how to start a fire. They're not. They're going to die for want of water when there's going to be 100 gallons in the hot water heater out in their garage, and they're not even going to think of it. There'll be <laughs> fucking water in their toilet tank, and they won't even realize to drink that. That's how sad this has gotten. I'm telling Jeez. you, people are have lost the ability for common sense. Common sense is no longer common anymore. Right. <laughs> it's not. No, it's and, not. And I'm telling you. It's 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 getting worse and worse and worse. Look at the curriculums offered in in the in the universities and shit. It's it's not even. They're just crazy. You know, black gender studies and shit. What? <laughs> I mean, it had nothing to do with real life. It's really unbelievable what it's come to. And this five G thing they're talking about. Yeah, the five G. Five gonna. Five G is gonna drive everybody nuts. You see. We're all electromagnets. We all run on frequency. We all are, are frequency, electricity. When your brain tells your hand to move, it's because it shot a little electrical impulse through your nerve endings, through the synopsis and the acetylcholine, to your hand, and it makes it move. It's all done with frequency. Whoa. They already know all these frequencies. All those cell phone towers you see, okay, <clears throat> 400 watts to one of those towers will send out a signal for 26 miles, okay? And these things have these big, thick wires going up. They're wired for like 4,000 watts. Those things are basically 
inside out microwaves on a pole is, is what a cell phone tower is. And it can literally fry you. If they turned it up all the way, it would fry you where you sit. It would cook you from the inside out. Well, let me ask you about this. Trump recently tweeted out about, we need 5G. We need to add more 5G. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. yeah. That's that was kind of a up. bummer, huh? That, but it causes, I'm a Trump supporter, but that causes me a lot of grief. There's a lot of things Trump is doing that well, makes me makes me begin to think that he, too, is compromised. Well, you know, he too some, some is people partially on board. Yeah, with, some people's theory on that, his tweet about the 5G, is that he was just bringing it into the discussion. He's he's trying to pe- he get people be. to he's, talk about it so that people are like, what is, you know, all these There's comments. Roy. 5G is a millimeter p- pulse wave. That's exactly right. It's a military weapon directed at, and he's exactly right. 5G frequency, the same one they're talking about, is used in military equipment. Roy, you're right on the money because he's talking right. This is, this is fucking, this is some bad shit, and they want to broadcast it over the entire face of the earth. I'm telling yeah. you, it's going to drive people nuts. It's going to cause suicides. It's going to do all kinds of shit, which, once again, that's exactly what they want. Yeah. There's a lot of they, useless eaters like me and you. They need <laughs> to get rid of. They, 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 they want us on. They especially want people like just like me and you, people that are still cognizant, that are thinking for ourselves, and that are seeing this, that we've got our eyes open, yeah. and we understand what's going on. They want us gone badly. <laughs> yeah. They don't want nothing but soft pliable, zombified, unisex, you know, genderless people who can't think at all. People that want them to tell them that that's what they want, okay, because that's what Satan wants, and that's how that's Satan's plan for the world and shit. Yeah. It's not going to work. Okay? Do you think his, changing already. Do you think his plan's coming to fruition, that the uh, game plan, the, oh, it, ga- it, the final show's coming gone up? About as, gone about as fruited as it's going to get, okay, because the other side's already woke. And the other side sees things. And I'm telling you, we're heading for it. If you can't tell we're heading for it by simply sitting in a quiet room for five minutes and look inside yourself, all the answers to everything are inside of yourself. If you just sit and look for it, if you can't tell something's coming by the feeling in the pit of your stomach right now, then I, I'm sorry for you. Because I can sit here and I can feel something's coming. I can tell. Okay, yeah. I wouldn't feel like this if it wasn't. I'd be interested in, you know, Picking up a woman or getting on my motorcycle or something. But I don't. I think about this shit all the time because so I feel it in my stomach. Yeah, the armor of God will protect you from 5G. The armor of God will protect you from everything. If you take him into your heart and you believe in God, you'll be protected from all this shit. He won't let you go. But remember, there's a lot of people here that have their eyes open and shit, and we're hosts. Okay? Yeah. It, that, that's what you want to call it. You're a host. Uh, a lot of people host demons. A lot of people have demons inside of them. Nice folks, wonderful people, but they're hosting a demon they have for years. Other people host good spirits, angels and shit, and they actually go inside of you, and it's still you. You're still talking and everything, but you have the spirit of the angel inside of you. You're hosting the angel, yeah. and you're doing God's work. And this There's is literally a, lot a of fight, people here. good versus evil, huh? It's the battle. Oh, it is. It, yeah. Yes, that's exactly what this is. You can believe what you want. You can believe in heaven or hell. You can believe in God or not believe in God, but it's what it is. And there's there's so much shit going on right now. So many scary. So you know about all the, you know about our magnetosphere. You know what's been going on there? You paying attention to that? I haven't. Uh, you know our, our magnetic surrounds the earth. Right. Yeah. The the thing that keeps the uh, scary rays from the sun from hitting us directly and all that other shit. Right. Well, it it's already hugely flattened out. It's supposed to look like an hourglass. And it's it's flat now. Blown back. It looks like a real heavy huh? wind. And that's supposedly because of Planet X and their system, you know, and the magnetic forces at work. But lately, we've been getting these huge blasts, big shock waves hitting it. And like from midnight to 3 o'clock in the morning, you'll see the waves flatten out to where it's like just a line and all of a sudden it just roils all up and the whole thing's gone. It's like I've been watching this shit for years and I've never seen anything like that. It's just, I don't know what it is but we've been getting it almost every night and I'm telling you the magnetosphere has a great deal to do with everything because once again, we're electric machines. We, we're magnetic. 
Magnetism affects us greatly, okay? Magnetism has a lot to do with how you act, with how you feel about things, with your thought processes and all kinds of different stuff. When you start screwing with the Earth's magnetic, you're screwing with all the beings on the Earth as well. And that's right. why there's so much weird shit going on. I'm telling you, we're at, a, we're at the worst tipping point, of, I believe, in, in the history of man. Well, there's that's a lot of people that agree with you, man. Um, you know, yeah. they, th- they think we're headed there, that we're there. There's a lot of anger, I, I a lot kinda, of hatred, a lot of confusion right now. A, a lot. lot of it, and, and a lot of it's going come, come to come to the point of violence. And the only thing I can tell you, it, the best thing I can possibly tell you is no matter what, don't get the chip. Don't give yourself to Satan. Yeah. At some point, if you're still alive, you're going to have to answer. Okay? They're, they're gonna, he's going to ask you. You're going to be asked at some point, are you willing to give your soul? You're going to be flat out asked. If you say yes, you're doomed. Yeah. Do not do that. Give, give, give your life for that. It's, 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 the whole thing is it's mind-boggling. <laughs> it is. It's I'm crazy. 62 years old, and I thought I'd seen it all. And holy shit, the last couple of years, I've been like, whoa, what the, Samuel? <laughs> you know, I'm up here in Seattle, and, and it's... Uh, How is Seattle? How's the weather? Yeah. Uh, well, we had the worst snow we've had in 70 years here. Really? How much fell? Yeah, and I'm from Montana. I've been buried in my house before many times. I lived in East Glacier National Park, and shit, I've seen wow. things. Yeah, this, this was nothing to me, but boy, up here, it blew everybody away. Yeah, the worst we've ever had, probably two, two and a half, three feet. Wow. It was terrible up here. I've never seen snow like that here, ever. Really? Usually, oh, in Seattle? Come on, usually it's 55 degrees all winter long. Usually... Our winter consists of rain. If there's ever any snow here in Seattle, it's a few flakes. It's here for a day or two, and it's gone. Okay? Snow to us is rain. And, you know, it rains all the time here. That's what it does in Seattle, and, and, and that's what it does in the winter. And it, it, it gets cold sometimes, but rarely freezing. Yeah. You know, rarely. Okay? And this <laughs> time here, it was nasty. And wow. that's because of all the earth changes we're going through. That's because of what's happening to the earth. It's, we're being literally kind of ripped apart by all the forces out there, by Planet X and all this other crap and all the stuff going on. That's why there's been so many earthquakes. That's why there's been more earthquakes than have ever been recorded. There's more volcanoes going than have ever been recorded. That's what they're freaking out about. Yellowstone going to go. And right, blah, yeah, blah, I've been blah. hearing about Yellowstone. Oh, man, and you know I'm in a bad spot here. Seattle's a bad spot. I mean, <laughs> just, just just sitting back for a minute, look at a look at a map of the United States and just zoom it out and look at it for a minute. One that shows the mountains and shit, and you'll see that three quarters of the United States is basically flat. It's smooth, and there's a range here and there, but mostly flat. And then you get to the West Coast, and it's just nothing but crinkled up chunks of land it just looks like somebody smunched it all up like an accordion the whole west coast all the way up from canada all the way down to mexico you look at it and it's just tore to hell and then then move over start getting into colorado type area and on over and it just smooths right out and the whole rest of the continent smooth as they'll go up to canada same thing smooth it's all nice and smooth but on the west coast it's bad news and that's because this has all happened before there was a pole shift before, and we're about to get one again. And and that's what happens during the pole shift. Everything gets tore up. Oh, you geez. know, our poles, our, our North Pole's been moving at a huge, like, 40 miles a year type rate. And it used to it used to move, like, four inches every 10 years. And now it's moving, like, 40 miles a year, and it's heading towards Siberia. It's heading toward Russia. Whoa. And it's moving fast. The North Pole is moving so fast at this time, they have to keep recalibrating the GPS because the airliners and stuff won't be able to find the landing fields. It's so far off whack because it throws the GPS off when the North Pole isn't where it's supposed to be. So they have to keep recalibrating the GPS, and they're even having to do that more than they thought. They thought every six or eight months they're having to do it like every three months or so. They have to recalibrate it at this point because the pole is moving so fast. This kind of shit is unprecedented and it doesn't happen without a reason yeah <laughs> I mean, the writing's on the just, wall right big time 
it's hugely on the wall. You just have to look at it. You have to see what it is. You have to let it talk to you. But we, we are heading for something. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's going to be a, a nuclear thing or I don't know if it's going to be man doing it or the, the strange planet coming in going to do it or CERN going to pop us. I don't know what the hell it's going to be, but I know something's coming. Well, I, I know it's a lot not of... going to stay like yeah, and I know a lot of people right now are worried about the Venezuela situation. Yeah, that's what's your thoughts on that? Good. Have you watched the India Pakistan thing? You've been looking oh, at that. I've I seen something about that. It's getting it's pretty about heavy. Ready huh? to go. Yeah. Yeah, it's, India's bombing the crap out of them. Pakistan's all pissed off, and and these are these are a couple of countries that are uh, well, <laughs> they're they're prone to some rash moves and to some stupid shit. All right, and both of them have nukes. All right, that's that's what I want to key on here is both Pakistan and India are nuclear powers. You know, they may not have much. They may just have a couple. But all it's going to take is one. And as soon as somebody pops one of those off, I guarantee you other people are going to start popping them off. (laughs) Just wait. We'll all get in the act here pretty quick. But it's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, People are too smart for that. It'll be tactical nukes. They'll pop a few cities. We'll pop a few of their cities, and both, both sides will kick back for a minute and see how the other one's going to react, you know, before they completely destroy mankind. But I guarantee they'll tactical nuke a few. There'll be some nukes going off. You watch. I know we're going to get hit. Fuck, I'm, I'm only 10 miles away from fucking uh, Jim Creek. Man, sounds <laughs> like a lot of you know doom. What, oh, shit. You know what Jim Creek is? No, I don't. Jim Creek, Jim Creek uh, Naval Communication Center. It's the place where they talk to the very deep nuclear submarines that are, you know, many miles deep in the ocean and shit. It's a huge antenna array that covers a valley with, you know, like half a mile long antennas that stretch across this valley and shit. It's called the Green... Look it up sometime. It's called the Jim Creek Naval Communication Center. Okay. And, uh, yeah, the Russians just broadcast a thing the other day and say, well, if we do use nukes We'll uh, we'll only nuke two or three places in the United States, and and we'll show you what it is. And they put it on their national TV, and they showed. And, and Jim Creek is one of them. And I'm about ten miles away from there, so <laughs> yeah, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah. Well, hopefully it doesn't yeah. all go down that way. You, you you ever think that good forces might might prevail, or you think it's just uh, going to be a big I battle? Think I know they're gonna. It's going to be a big battle. It's what it always is and always has been and always yeah. will be. We're in a wonderful time, my friend. This is a time that everybody else in the history of the human race has always wished or secretly wished they could live in. Because I'm sure of it. We're living in, in end of days or what's going to be known as damn close to the end of days. I think that <clears throat> our lifestyles are all about to change dramatically. I think a lot of people are going to die. I think a lot of shit's going to happen, and I think it's it's going to go down as one of the most crazy and exciting times in the human race. It's uh, yeah. it's, it's fascinating. Yeah, it this is. It's a wild time to live. Oh, it is. Yeah, I mean, just just ever since Trump has become president, it's been getting crazier and crazier, man. Um, Here, and he's driving them to the brink. Well, he's scaring the hell out of them. He's <laughs> he's doing all kinds of shit. He is. And you know, I can't say that. That what he was talking about, you know, uh, about the 5G and shit, maybe was to just bring it to everybody's attention. The guy's pretty damn smart, okay? He he is playing 4G chess. He's, he's playing chess two or three moves ahead of everybody else. He really is. He he tricks people and shit. He does all kinds of crazy shit. And rightly so. You know, he, yeah. there's so much about Trump that people don't know. You know, you know who Tesla was, right? Nikola yeah. Tesla? Oh, yeah, man. Great man an old man, worked with Einstein and shit. When he died, you know, the government came in and swooped in and grabbed all his shit right away. Oh, yeah. All this stuff out of his motel room and his his uh, laboratory and shit, they grabbed all his books and his notebooks and shit. You know, they took all that stuff right away because Tesla had some inventions that were way ahead of their time. So, do you know who they gave them to? Was it, uh... Huh? Tell me. Trump's dad. Trump's dad? Trump was it his uncle? I think, it was his... I think it was his dad. Is what I heard. Maybe it was his uncle. I know it was somebody awful close to Trump, but it was it was Trump. A Trump is who they gave all of Tesla's shit to. <laughs> all right, and then you know I it just 
God, there's just so many like this I know. coincidences. There's so many. These aren't fuck coincidences. <laughs> okay, come on. Yeah. This is this shit's tied together. It's tied together in a whole bunch of different ways. They really don't care to have us find out. That's what's going on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's well, crazy. I hope it doesn't end crazily bad, doom, doom, doom. I hope maybe we can make some. No. I don't know. I, I have some hope, but, I mean, you have some pretty I do, too. Legit... I, I, I want to hear what mine says. Do you mind? I flap and flap and flap. You yeah, yeah we, got some up, other okay? peop- yeah, we got some other people that you want to call in, but it's always good to hear yeah, from I, you. I do this. You're going to always hear from me. I'm always going to be here if you're here. I love this show. <laughs> well, thank you so much, man. Thank- hey, make sure you get on Twitter and retweet that tweet so you can enter for the giveaway, man. I don't know if you're on Twitter or not. But... Well, I don't have Twitter, but I'll, I'm okay. Okay. All right, brother. Well, hey. I'm a GLP, and I'll watch for this place for sure. Absolutely. So I'll talk to you next time and, and get mine says on here. All right, man. Thank you so much for calling. All right. Me. All right. Peace out, brother. Of Bye. Bye. That was Limerick. From GLP calling in. Yeah. Uh, Next caller, come on on. 818-659-0055. I'm here. Uh, Mine says, says, hey, man, thanks so much for calling into the Hidden Path Podcast. I'm Residence Rich. It's nice to meet you, man. Yeah, I've I've called before. My name was The Things You Forgot. Oh, okay. Right on, man. Well, it's good to talk to you again. How you been, brother? Good. I I saw you on. I thought I'd give you a call. I haven't seen you do a show in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, kind of taking a little break, but we're back now. Um, what have you been into? What's been on your mind, man? Uh, what's been on my mind? Uh, let me see. I'm actually like currently I'm helping this one YouTuber, oh, okay. uh, make a, I'm making, helping her do a little animation cause I do cartoons. So oh, I'm sweet. just throwing that out there. Yeah. yeah. If anyone needs, wants to collaborate, I can help out with that, but I, I need to do one thing at a time. So I'm working on her little thing first. Um, um, but other than that, I wanted to. See, what are y'all talking about? What's the main subject? Oh, we're just going anywhere okay. tonight, man. What kind of cartoons are you talking about? Like a cartoon show, or, or just like a comic strip? It's, um, we had kind of a little bit of both, really. Like, I'm I'm actually working on. I want to be a producer, you know, and I I I do want to help people do their dreams. And if I had the money to do it, I would sponsor, except for the part where, I would support everybody who who wants to like you know like make art or, <laughs> it depends yeah but it depends on the right person because yeah. you know how it goes when oh, you have yeah. money or some kind of thing everybody wants to use the things you got oh yeah definitely. but i do want to help the right people and i feel like these groups we're in the certain specific people like I don't want to just get too specific but just certain groups are i feel like are definitely on the right path yeah and this is one of them and you you want to help you want to help the good people move forward, right? Help the good side out, right? Yeah, no, no manipulators. Yeah, I don't like helping manipulators. Yeah, or deceivers. I'm not trying to help. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, oh, and that's one thing I wanted to talk about. Sure. I guess we could segue into it. Yeah. Um, I I've, I've been wanting to like confront all of these kind of uh, agendas that are kind of put up as you know what do they call it progress like movements of progress when in reality they're just like uh psyops like government yes. psyops right and uh what's, and what's one that comes one to mind i would say uh the feminist movement it would be one of them oh because in reality yeah yeah see it's, it's a the subjects are really uh kind of controversial well that's what but we're here it, for it, the reason yeah i, I want to talk about it because i feel like women definitely are a key role in this whole reality you know like they are the birth givers and they are part of us like they're, they're they're the other side of us and and it is true throughout history women have been has been being oppressed but it's not just women 
you know, it's both of us. We, oh, me yeah. and humanity have been being oppressed. Big time. But, yeah, but with with the feminist movement, with the mainstream media and how that whole agenda is going, or the, I don't know, the movement, I don't know the right name to give it, but. Just the feminist movement you're talking women. about? Yeah. Yeah, the feminist movement put, puts genders against each other and this guy his name's subtle infinity he was saying like a real woman is gonna help a man not to try to oppress a man and a real man is gonna try to help a woman and not try to you know oppress him right yeah and yeah he was just saying i want to he wants to open up dialogue talking about when it, about that because women are you know like i said they they have a big role in in our all of our lives because they're the ones who teach us you know oh, stuff absolutely. as we're growing up and men men do too but and that's what he was saying we need to realize the roles that we have because people nowadays don't know what it means to be a real woman or they don't know what it means to be a real man because we've been separated so much from you know what is natural we don't we we're so used to what's normal we don't even know what's natural yep you're right about that there's a and, lot of confusion Yes. Yeah, I mean, just look that, about that look at it like whole... with kids that are don't even know which sex they should be, or or nine year olds exactly. that are transsexuals, and I mean that's yeah, and they're pushing that. Yeah, the gov- that's a government push thing. But you gotta watch. I mean, I feel like I need to be more watch my words because people, you know, especially when you start talking about legal and government and stuff, they want proof, evidence, and then slander you know and all this other stuff can come up from it so i i don't want to keep on saying because it's it's more than the government i've I've said this before it's a spiritual war it's a spiritual war that we're that we are in and people if they just look at man then then they're already uh they're already lost you know they need to look beyond yeah i mean they've tried to divide us so many ways and that's definitely one of the ways you've just hit on is men versus women right one of the ways is divide yeah, us. Yeah, men versus women. Yeah. Yeah. And then, okay, one more. And then you can ask me whatever you want. Uh, and that's probably <laughs> all I got to say. Uh, that's okay. Let, sure, let man. Us. What's on your okay, mind? Okay. Uh, the last divide that I've noticed recently, and it is true, you know, the one that always frustrates me is the, the religious spirit. That's the one that always gets me because, okay. you know, I feel like that's the indirect opposition to spirituality is religiousness. You know, you, you try to go to be a spiritual person and then there's this thing that's almost exactly like it, but the opposite right there, Yeah, you know, right there to, to deceive. And um, I hear you there. It's almost like they I, bring people in and people are looking for a spiritual experience and then they end up getting more rules and end up losing what they were looking religious. for. So. Yeah, but yeah, it's true. But you need—that's why it goes to you need to be following the right person. You need to know who the hell you're following and be in the right groups, right, right, right circle. What are you following um, right now? Oh, yeah. that's helping you spiritually. What am I? Hmm. I mean, there's a couple of channels, you know, Christian channels that I listen to. Yeah. Um, I've spoke about it before. The Book of the Way. It's it's uh, not more known as the Tao Te Ching and I don't know I feel like I I try to let the spirit lead me more like you know the Holy Spirit and that's kind of it I could be doing more like I feel like definitely um being comfortable is something that is not good you know because it gets us lazy and content (laughs) with where we're at yeah and I feel like that's definitely where a lot of us are at and I'm kind of just speaking for myself because God is giving me everything I need and I just need to, you know, take advantage of it fully. Yeah. And, uh, definitely, man. Um, well, you got a positive outlook on things. Do you see a positive outcome through all this? Do you think this is maybe just, yeah, of course. You think this is just it's all a test. birth you know, pains in a way? It's all a test. Yeah. We're, we're all, you know, we're on different phases. We're on different stages and pe- people don't like to admit that because it's a pride thing. You know, they don't, they don't want to humble themselves and be a, a like a child, but it's we we are in a, in a spiritual sense. A lot of us are still little babies, and we have a lot to learn and a lot oh, yeah. of growing to do. Definitely. And I think you know, 
this life that we're living is this is like uh i don't know how to say it. it's hard to put into words there's so much more <laughs> you know it, it, we're so concerned about everything now but it's all part of the the life experience you know it's yeah even i said it before even if my like even if my head gets chopped off i'm i'm content you know i'm not i'm not afraid of what happens i actually recently just had a uh do you dream do you remember your dreams uh some some of them i do some of them i can't some of them i don't know did you have a good one i recently well i recently had this one dream where like out of body experience or sleep paralysis oh, whatever wow. you want to call it yeah where i was just laying there and i was just like oh this is uh weird it felt different it felt different but i couldn't move and, and i was just thinking like is this what death is because normally um when sleep paralysis you can't move you know but yeah but i felt like this was more of a dream because i've been in sleep paralysis and this felt more like um have you ever read the book of the dead I have not. Is that the Egyptian book they found? Yeah. I it's have. an Egyptian yeah, book that they have. I read a little bit of it and um it it's it's just basically like when you're dying, it talks about how when you're dying, like what you experience and that's kind of what I was um Wow, so you dreaming about I was experiencing. So could you see your body? You were outside yeah. of it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and it was more like just a it was just like a dream or something, like I said, but yeah. I wasn't afraid, but it goes back to just the experience. Like, even if I am dying, you know, I don't feel, I when I'm putting that in that position, at least in a dream, you know, I, I didn't feel like a, yeah scared or anything. I was just like, huh, so is this what this feels like? Right. It, and that's how that life is, you know, you, you go through stuff and you feel it and you wonder why and try to just understand what's going on. It is a mystery, isn't it? And yeah uh, it's for for most people yeah it's a mystery <laughs> but once you once you see it it's once you remember everything it's it's uh it's all clear you know it's all yeah. clear as the day but, but it it is definitely a waking a oh, sleep sleeping in a waking state a thing that we go through like we do we're not always i mean i'm not always awake i this word everybody uses now awake yeah but it, it has woke. to just everybody's be, woke <laughs> with being aware yeah. yeah i think people don't understand what that means it's just being aware of like the situation you're in and and that's we're all experiencing that on different levels oh, but, yeah. but to be lucid to be awake is to be lucid yeah do you think humanity's heading towards an awakening as a whole you there you still there uh, I think we lost him. Hello? Oh, he's gone. That was an interesting talk he was giving me there. Interesting, interesting, yeah. Anybody else? Open lines, 818-659-0055. Call me, man. I got a little bit of time left. Yeah, he was out of body experience. That's something fascinating. I have not yet experienced that. I had a crazy dream, though, about a mountain blowing up. I don't know if that was a, you know, a prophecy dream. No. I was going to post it on GLP, but there's so much doom on GLP already and things that are going to happen. I wasn't too sure about it. Let's see. We got a caller calling in. Hey there. You're on the Hidden Path Podcast. How you doing? Yo. How are you, my friend? Who's this? It's Stryker, man. Oh, Stryker. What's up, dude? How you been? Oh, you know, just playing the game. Playing the game, huh? Thought I, yeah, I thought I'd call in. And well, hey, thanks for calling. I didn't catch the last part of that last caller. I seen he had something like Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Is the like Book that? of the Way, the Tao, the Book of the Way. Um, we actually yeah. lost him. I don't know what happened there. Uh Oh, yeah. How you been, That's brother? Kind of, all right. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, living living the dream, enjoying the real rain. <laughs> Where are you? It's Where it's like raining. Crazy out here. Where are you? 
Oh, it's been raining. Uh, L.A. Los Angeles. It's been raining like crazy. Yeah. yeah. Raining like crazy. So, so. Well, what do you want to talk yeah, about tonight, like to brother? Call. Well, I don't know. But, um, I didn't get a chance to catch the show. I've just been catching some of your callers and stuff like that. Yeah. We had uh, Sarah call in talking about seeing ghosts and hearing ghosts. And she's down in Denver right now, and there's a military training exercise going on. Helicopters flying around. Sounds pretty wild. Oh, yeah. Yeah, anything like that in yeah. Los Angeles going on like that? Oh, that's happening all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Hey, you walk out in the backyard, and we got a police helicopter right over your backyard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the guy next door's got chickens growing. <laughs> How's the... Uh, well, yeah, that's... How's the atmosphere out in Los Angeles? Are people getting crazy or are people chill? Uh, well, you know, everybody's in a rush. You know, just like Denver stuff. I think with, uh, so, you know, I don't want to pinpoint a, a race or anything like that. But, yeah, <laughs> plenty of honking and screaming and cussing and flipping oh, people geez. off. And <laughs> but that's kind of always the way L.A. is and stuff. Yeah. So, well, yeah. As far as that military stuff, uh, was was she aware of the stuff that's been going on in in Estes Park with the uh, the UN? Uh, with the United Nations? No, I she had mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. They've been. Yeah, they've been up there for years. Really, the United Nations? Sure what do they do up there? there? That's uh, right outside of Denver, right? Yeah, it's up there in uh, um, over the. The highest point of the, the Rockies over there. God, I forget the name. Of it. That's just Park going into. Yeah. What's the United Nations Point doing up Park. there? They're doing some kind of getting ready to to, to jack somebody up. I think. What? <laughs> yeah, they've been doing it for years. I mean, we've been seeing stuff go up there. I mean, when I was back there living stuff in Fort Collins, there. Oh. They, yeah. So what, like trucks and some stuff? Kind or? of secret. Yeah, they got some kind of secret training going on back there. Wow. So, I wonder what that's about. Yeah. Well, maybe something nefarious, huh? Yeah, I don't know. That was when that whole, you know, when everybody was talking about having those uh, those camps and stuff like that. Oh, uh, the FEMA camps, um, yeah. Yeah, right. the FEMA camps. Well, they're still talking about it. Well, you know, from the so, people that have called in tonight, we've talked about you know, just the situation right now, maybe in the world and in this country, is that people are getting a little, I don't know, a little more divided, a little crazier. It seems like like uh, Limerick, one of our callers, called in and said that the cell phones are driving people nuts and people want to know what to do. People don't know what to do. Um, you know, what do you well, what do you feel? What do you feel we're heading towards with this? Well, I think both the last two callers were, you know, the, the last caller being when he's talking about women, um, I think he, he's 100% correct about that. There, there is an importance of the woman uh, biblically and and with what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I mean, you and I have had conversations, and yeah, um, I know you don't exactly agree, but um, <laughs> that, that that woman is very important and. And it bleeds into the the human woman as well. What do you well, mean? I don't agree. I think women are important. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking biblically wise. Oh, okay. And I, I, I think people can put two and two together with what I'm talking about. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, as far as the religious part goes, and <laughs> talking about God's mother. Um. And, you know, like a caller before that had talked about Satan. Um, he's he's 100% correct there, too, in, in my belief. It's, what's happening is now. Um, I don't know how I feel about the the 5G thing. Yeah. Keep the damn phone away from my head. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think... Uh... <laughs> You think Satan and his forces are stepping up the game? That they're getting more serious? They got a game plan. Hey, this is 
this is the way I look at it, and I think I said it to you the other day. Is if Satan isn't in your living room right now, if he's not playing around in your living room and messing with your mind, he's satisfied with you. Wow. So, okay. Whatever's going on, you better be checking it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's the way I feel. You know, same thing with the Catholic Church. I mean, it's it's there. It's evident. There's there's no way around it, mm-hmm. and you know it's right right there in your face, and it's got it's got everybody you know turning against each other, and I think part of one of the biggest problems is, is I think we're understanding we're a country of protest. Everything's been about protest for the last sixteen hundred years. Now we've gotten to the point sixteen yeah, since sixteen hundred. Sorry, we've gotten to the point where we're protesting each other and it's sad yeah well we see it all around us man yeah we're divided in so many ways right Mm -hmm. do you think a lot of them are useful though that they'll lead to some kind of progress or do you think they're just all they all have just to divide us what do you mean the the devil or 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 what what i feel shadowy figures need to do with this yeah what do you, uh, you what know, do you, they're, 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 they're winning this game. They're, they're winning this game, but, you know, you can go back biblically and remember what Christ said, the devil will not prevail against me. So, right. Yeah, um, but some people are being really drawn into anger and hatred. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like I said, if, if, if the devil's not in your living room right now, he's satisfied with what you're doing. <laughs> so, is the, uh, is the devil know, in your that's living how, room? That's is how he, present. Yeah. Is he in my living room? Yeah. Is he oh, temp- tempting uh, you? Or are you yeah, being? T- I got. No, I, I got a streak of bad luck going that really makes me look bad. You know. <laughs> oh, so I, I would I would happen to say <laughs> I would have to say yes, he is. <laughs> You know, and that 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 is the more and more I turn to the faith, the more and more I develop problems. And and some people will probably look at that and say, "Well, maybe it's the faith." Yeah. But you know, hey, I'm I'm not going to turn away from the faith just because of Judas. You know what I mean? I'm, just because of who? I'm Judas. Judas. I'm not going to turn away. Yeah, I'm no. not going to turn away for what he's. He's done. I'm going to follow Christ. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. I mean, you're working on your own spiritual advancement, right? Your own spiritual enlightenment. Oh, yeah, yeah. What What helps you? Yeah. Well, what helps me? I mean, Buddhism is still a very important part of my thought process. Yeah. Does um, meditating play a big I part? Because that's one of the things about the society is we, it seems like nobody has a, a moment to stop and catch their breath. Everybody's worried about what's on Twitter, yep. every waking moment's looking at the phone. You think meditation's yep. kind of still important? People, I, Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's another reason why I went back to my, my religion is because meditation is important just as much as, you know, the Buddhist meditation. Right, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I think people have... Uh, you know, it's like you said, everybody's on the Internet, everybody's want, 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 but nobody's stopping and listening, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, just just your basic prayers, you listen to them, and it's all indul- 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 excuse me. <laughs> indul- indulgences? God, I... Get it out, you man. You know what I mean. <laughs> I can't, for some reason, I can't say it, but see that cigarette. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and don't, God. Just give it up. I don't even know what you're saying. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's all about me. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, okay. I, I, I mean, there used to be a time when we, you know, when we would pray, and we would pray for the other man. Now now we pray for, hey, what can you give me? Yeah. And, right. you know, whatever, whatever tickles our ear, that's what we're going for. You know, I see it more and more every day. I mean, I don't, I don't just wallow around the Catholic Church. I go to Christian churches as well. 
yeah. see what's going on there. And one of the biggest things that really, really, and I'm not a homophobe or anything like that, was this the <laughs> condom thing. It, it sounds what? crazy. The co- the condom thing, and and I think that's how these 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 groups have uh, have gotten around. You know, because you know, with religion, it's natural order. Okay. You know, well, what do you mean about the order? the condom thing? Are you, are you talking about churches? Well, well, that, that's what I'm trying to get to. Is is you know, when 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 the churches talk about natural order, that's exactly what they mean, man and woman and stuff like that. Well, the unnaturalness is is more and more churches are into contraceptives and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Which, which leaves us wide open for those, those groups to say, "Hey, that's unnatural." So you're a hypocrite, mm-hmm. and it, it's true. And, and, and since the '60s, that you know, that's when it started happening. And and then you know, now we got all these groups. And it, what's what's really funny is these groups are against each other. The lesbians are against the transvestite or, or the transgender. It's, <laughs> you know, I mean, even these groups are turning against each other. And you're like, wow, you know, division you know, upon like, division. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's you know, we played right into the game. We 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 all played right into it. Well, what do you think the solution uh, is for people? What do you think people need more of? Well, I'm not saying you need to be religious, but you need to be more spiritual. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, because right now all religions have got their own division going on. Oh, stuff. yeah. So you need to be spiritual. You, you need to acknowledge the man. You know who the man is, it's Jesus Christ. You need, you need to just acknowledge him. Well, hey. And uh, Yeah. I mean, it can't be too bad because now we have people that are acknowledging Satan in public, right? You got people putting the oh, statues, yeah. statues of Satan <laughs> up at the town halls and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, that that's what I mean. The <laughs> the unnatural or the natural order is no longer natural. <laughs> So, well, what do you see for what? What do you see happening in the future? Do you do you see something bad on the horizon, or do you see something good, or do you just see it continuing I, to play I, out? I, I I actually see good because you know in in my own spiritual path, I've I've listened to some of the words, and and I don't believe in there's going to be a rapture. That we're living in that thousand years of of peace right now, and a lot of that for the steps that Putin has, ta- has taken, um, yeah, against against the Pope. I mean, he went back to the Orthodox Church, and, and yeah. he's he's he's. I, I think he's taken the right steps. Okay, even though the Pope or the Popes have not really consecrated. Russia exactly. Oh, but, okay. the Fatima know, I, thing, I, huh? I, yeah, I, and I well, yeah, and I think Putin just said, you know what? Screw it, I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna concentrate <laughs> this country myself, <laughs> and that's what he's done, you know. And, uh, and and I think we'll we'll be able to bear that fruit pretty soon. Yeah. You know? Well, what about the people that are evil out there? There's a lot of people that don't believe evil exists. But some of us well, believe think, that there I, are evil things going on in this world. There's, you know, weird oh, yeah. coincidences of, you know, especially with Trump taking down a lot of pedophilia gangs and human trafficking mm-hmm. gangs. What about all the evil? Can we defeat all this? If we stand up to it? Yeah. You know, you know, when you start talking, it's okay to kill a baby. You know, that. God, it's so hard to tell. It, it, it's like, wow. Yeah. You know, that is pretty. Uh, you got New York. Yeah, you got New York. I mean, it's yeah. even. They're to the point of discussing and killing the baby even after it's born. I've seen that. And it's like, yeah, it's like, wow. What, what kind of people are these? You know, that even after. I mean, when are we ever human? We're, I guess we're never human. 
because the evolutionists have convinced everybody that we're all monkeys. <laughs> you know, and, and and there's there's really no proof of that. Um, yeah, you do know, you think that kind of talk makes people devalue themselves by believing in things like that? At, absolutely. I mean, if you're sending your kids off to college or or even high school, wherever they're teaching evolution, your your whole being is being devalued. It's it's wow. it's horrible horrible to think about and and these kids are eating it up and, and the thing about it you, you know when you talk about um atheists and stuff well i don't believe in this and i don't have you know yeah you i, I don't have any faith the fact of the matter is, is you do have faith you're putting all your faith in the blind faith mm. and 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 you really need to step back and reevaluate what those teachers are teaching you. I mean, they're teaching you stuff that, that simply does not exist. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's insanity. Yeah. You think and the how hum- quickly these kids eat it up. Yeah. And you, you think okay. like, especially with our youth in public schools and even college, do you think a lot of these teachings are, they have an intention and the intention is to make people confused to oh, the I- point where, we're always divided Absolutely. and confused. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 There's there's no doubt about that. I mean when when you got AOC talking the way she does, the people just <laughs> eat it up. It's like wow Alexandria you know, this, this Cortez. woman just told everybody Yeah, this woman just told everybody she's the boss and what she's a bartender, you know, serving yeah. beer and snacks and telling everybody she's the boss now and everybody's eating it up. <laughs> Yeah, she's become somewhat yeah, of a it, star. Crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I can't, I can't believe I just blurted the words AOC. I mean, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> well, you know, wow. there's a lot of that now. Like yeah. Bernie Sanders, he's running for president again. Um, they're yeah, calling for a I socialist revolution. They want to make America socialist. What's your What's your yeah, thoughts on yeah, that? I, Do you think that would I, work? You know. There is so much influence. I mean, now we get, I mean, I, I, you know, I've got, you know, friends in the Netherlands and stuff like that, how much they're on social media pushing these people, pushing these agendas along with it. And, you know, most, most of these American kids, they, they have access to those, those adults in yeah. the Netherlands and, you know, they're like, wow, you know, I want to be like Uncle Dickie, you know. <laughs> and it's like, no, Uncle Dickie's a pervert. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, you know, it's just. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, Roy, it's, it's, Roy in the chat, crazy, said, huh? Roy in the chat section, he made a good comment. And that is uh, faith can only be guided, not taught. You know, and I feel that's a, a lot of the times is, you know, you can only be shown the door. You have to be the one to walk through it. Right. And the faith faith becomes such a n- well, n- bad word because people are oh it's faith that's just like religious crap but it's really just belief right yeah I mean is there something to belief that belief gives power to ideas well, yeah I, I mean Oh, faith to be guided, not taught. It, it has to be taught because when you come up with your own interpretation, that's what we have today: is people interpreting things that are that are just incorrect. Right, but and and it, you have to have a teacher. You you do. And so many um, do, don't though. Well, the the great thing about the Bible is the truth. And what, regardless of what teacher teaches you it, you, you know, as Christ says, you know, do as, do as the Pharisee says, but don't do as he does because he's a hypocrite. <laughs> right. So what, what's written in the Bible is, is, is correct and true. Yeah. But, and you know, you know also just, just don't follow it. What, what's written just in the Bible is teacher in the hell. Right. And what's also written in the Bible is, you know, the coming apocalypse, uh, the the um, Antichrist, the mark of the beast, all this stuff. Um, you know, it's hard to have a 
positive outlook when you know that apocalypse is coming, that the Antichrist is coming. Uh, do you think those things are on the horizon? Uh, he, do you think we're there? Do you think there's? Already, he's already. He's already here. The earth is his kingdom. Oh. <laughs> you know, he's been here for forever. <laughs> you know, this this is his playground, I mean. Yeah. He, he, you could see that, you know, right right from the very openings of the book. You know, he's here. He's yeah. been here. Well, hopefully we can make yeah. it out of this. Uh, hopefully enough of us can stand together. Oh, I I believe we can. I believe we can because you know I mean you got Christ Himself saying He'll never win, and you got other high higher people in 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 the Bible that say the same thing, and, right. and those are the promises and stuff like that. We just yeah we're gonna lose a lot. I mean right now we're you we're losing billions of children a year. Yeah, it's sad, it's man. Thing. The, yeah, millions of innocent kids. And, yeah, you know it, it. It's it's yeah. It's 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 genocide. It really is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It, it's horrible. Horrible. <laughs> I've tell you know I've changed a lot since I've been here. I, I actually came out here because I was hoping there was you know this big conservative movement. Right. And uh, it's yeah, like, well, oh, hopefully boy, enough people the, wake up. Great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, we're out of time tonight. Uh, we're just yeah. about into three hours, but I was going to ask you before I let you go, what would your message be to people out there going forward? Well, like, like I said, the biggest message is is you don't have to be religious. Just recognize who's who and and keep keep calm and chive on them. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, just 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 put your Put your faith in, even even if you want to call it blind faith. Put your faith in the man. That's, hey. that's what you need to do. But, and, and and by the man you mean brighter. you mean the Creator, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Put put your faith in Him. Right on, man. Because He He He's your salvation. And, well, uh, it, it's been it's been a long road for me, and I've I've rejected it more than once. Yeah, and it just just do it, do it. You know I mean, well, you, you don't have to be religious. Just you, do it. You sound high in spirits now, so it's good to hear you. Uh, so hopeful yeah, and positive. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Stri- Striker, <laughs> yeah. man, thanks for calling in, brother. Thanks for checking in with us tonight. Right. Yeah, it's, and it's good, been... good to hear from you guys. And glad to, glad to see you back on and doing the thing. And oh yeah, you know. Um, hopefully we'll hear you soon again oh we will next week right <laughs> we actually got a user Good. from glp that wrote a couple books he has a prophecy of his own uh i believe he's going to oh, come sweet. on so that's going to be interesting yeah. yeah but all right well you stay I safe did, out I, there i just wish you would do it maybe thursday when i'm away <laughs> <laughs> i'll try we'll see what we can do yeah, so. yeah. all right all right well take you stay care. safe out there in los angeles brother Yep. All right. Take care. You too, man. All right. Bye. Be safe. Bye bye. That was Stryker from Los Angeles. All right, guys, we're out of time, but we have a a song here that one of the members in the chat said um, asked me if I could play it. Let's play it. Let's check it out before we go and give a little listen. Whenever I figure out I'm dreaming, I always start screaming and crying. I don't know why. Reality can be so confusing, but once you know what's right from wrong, things begin to become pretty amusing. Coincidence is my will, creating an incident. Baby, listen to my words, they are so intimate. It's like yin-yang duality, opposites attract. You hate me while I love you back. Do you understand that? You're something, I'm nothing, we loving, giving birth to everything right and wrong. This I can't explain reality popping out of my brain, let all you do be done with love or you'll go insane. Don't forget focus on me and you see it's all a dream what does that mean? Let me say it again you are dreaming. You are what gives words meaning? Reality is yours all you got to do is focus no and say the right words then hocus pocus. What's more important the words or the message? What's the secret to life I know there's a method. Good morning, I'll tell you my story because I'm right in line S with your destiny double entendre baby, it's just you and me. 
and three realities. I feel like this is the problem wrapped in the plan, perceiving a solution, calculating a conclusion all the while holding our hands. And just when we begin to understand the problem love lets us go because we don't want to stay. So I start to go crazy while you always tell me. This is not the way things are supposed to be. Then just like that I snap back. To reality and then I can see baby it's just you and me. Standing in front of one another holding on to each other's sanity. But it's just so crazy, to always start yelling and crying when I realize I'm here. Q's baby we stuck in a catch 22. You hate me but love the things I do for you. I love you but hate the things that you do to me. I see day, you see night. You say I'm wrong. I say you're right. You just want to live life have fun never wanting to fight with anyone. You do what you feel is right. And that's all right. But what is right? And what is wrong dot 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 because baby I want to do what's right even when it feels wrong. I'm sorry to say but I can't stay for too long. Because you keep forgetting the whole world in this song. I just want to let you know before I forget like I always do. I just want to let you know I love you. I normally do not say this to everyone from the bottom of my heart you know it's true and I know this is that same old saying but they got it from me I am the reason all the men get on one knee. Since the supposed beginning of time I loved you because I was yours and you were mine. It just is three. Me myself and I. Creating everything and everyone so we can love be free and have fun. Because reality is just a play on words and we are actors created by nouns and verbs, singing a song of life trying to get it right. We are going around and around over and over again trying to find that love that, that we lost. Because somewhere down the line we drink too much wine turning our joy into foolishness waking up to a bigger mess. We fell out of love with each other and fell onto the idea of love. Forgetting or true first love the holy three which circles back around to you and me. We need to talk you never really listen but I know you know we are on a mission. If one of us is not free none of us are. Only 14,000 and 1 billion know what I am talking about before I even say it. Because we have been saying it for what is to be perceived as centuries. The war has been won. Do what you know is right. Love. Forgive and be forgiven die to self and the Christ flame will be lit in our hearts P.S. I. Will love. You. Forever. Wake up you're dreaming I keep telling you but you can't hear me whispering or screaming. Trapped behind the magic mirror my true reflection resides in a different dimension I'm stuck in this loop whispering to myself stop screaming you're only dreaming. So now I sit here singing this song to you hoping and praying my loving words get through remember me my love dot please don't cry this goodbye is not forever, I am, we are. What's right, what's wrong, these words I speak will transform into a different song. This world's one big double entendre with more than one meaning. I hope and pray you're seeing what I'm seeing. Wow, that was deep stuff. Hey, thank you for the user who sent that in. Hey, and I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in tonight. It's been a fascinating show. It's been awesome. I love talking to you guys, calling in. Um, it's been great, man. It's been wild. Remember, you can always go to the hiddenpathpodcast.com to catch any of our shows. Follow us on Twitter. We'll let you know when another show's coming up. We plan to do one next week. Again, I'm Resonance Rich. For our producer, Renaissance Ted, this is The Hidden Path. Thanks again, guys. Have a good night.